Order number three, messages. Order number four, petitions. Order number five, papers. Leader of Majority Party. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I beg to lay the following papers on the table of the House today. Uh, Thursday, February the 11th, 2021, in the morning sitting. Number one, the reports of the Auditor General and financial statement in respect to the following institutions for the year ended 30th of June 2019 and the certificates therein. A, the National Government Constituencies Development Fund. B, the Prison Industries Revolving Fund. C, the National Treasury, Treasury Main Clearance Fund. D, the National Treasury Contingencies Fund. E, the National Treasury Provident Fund Account. F, the Kenya Loan, Local Loan Support Fund. But G, the National Youth Service Mechanical and Transport Fund. But H, the State Department for Infrastructure, Mechanical and Transport Fund. But I, the Street Families Rehabilitation Trust Fund. And lastly, the Women Enterprise Fund. Order number six, notices of motion. Of this particular order, we have uh, the Honorable Sosi and uh, the Honorable Halima Mosheke. Can we start with the Honorable Sosi? Thank you. Honorable Speaker, I beg to give notice of the following motion. That are aware that the existing diaspora, Kenya diaspora policy provides for the mainstreaming of the Kenya diaspora into national development process in line with the aspirations and goals of Kenya Vision 2030. Noting that formal remittance from the Kenya diaspora accounts for over 3% of the country GDP, channeled by an estimated 3 million Kenyans. Noting that contribution by the Kenya diaspora to the country's development goes much beyond personal remittances to include increased trade links, better access to foreign capital markets, skills and technology transfer, diaspora investment fund, knowledge exchange, among other enormous potential benefit. Acknowledging that the diaspora community continues to contribute immensely to national growth and the economy through increased house household uh, investment in education, entrepreneurship, health, finance, and housing, and con concerned that Kenya ought to formulate practical and incentive-driven policy to harness existing and future diaspora resources for social economic development, cognizance that Kenya has an obligation to counter the challenges hindering diaspora contribution to national development. This House resolves that the government, in conjunction with the diaspora representation and other key stakeholders, formulates a comprehensive, incentive-driven, and affirmative action-based diaspora policy, together with the, a corresponding implementation framework and organization structure to harness the ever-increasing diaspora resources for national development, and that the said policy be presented to the National Assembly within one year for consideration. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very well, let's have the Honorable Halima. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I beg to give notice of the following motion, that aware that Article 43 1D of the Constitution provides for the right to clean and safe water in adequate quantities for every person, further aware that up to 30% of Kenyans rely on an improved water sources, such as ponds, shallow wells, and rivers, whereas nearly 45% of Kenyans lack access to basic sanitation solutions, noting that proper water management is vital for sustainable development in light of threats to water availability, such as climate change, 
rapid population growth and industrialization, further noting that studies have indicated that the country's rainwater potential is more than 350 billion cubic meters, and that if harvested, this water can support up to five times the country's population, concerned that only nine out of 55 public water service providers in the country provide continuous water supply to connected areas, appreciating that over time, rainwater harvesting has been proposed as a possible means to address the water crisis in the country. This house resolves that the government institutionalizes rainwater harvesting and storage in all buildings as a standard requirement and further that all road construction incorporate storm water collection and storage for non-portable use. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Very, very well. And today it seems uh, the specially elected members are very active. So we go to the next order. Order number seven, questions and statements. And honorable members, on this particular order, we will start with questions. And we only have the ordinary questions. And we'll start off again with the honorable Godfrey Osotsi. Mr. Speaker, I wish to ask question number one of 2021. And I also note that, uh, Mr. Speaker, this question lapsed in the last session. Uh, but because of the interest, particularly in Vihiga County, I want to bring back this question. So the question reads, and is directed to the Cabinet Secretary for Environment and Forestry. One, when will the government degazette the Shiru and Shaviringa settlement schemes in Kakamega Forest, which were set aside in 1988 as part of the government compensation to the residents of Mbale, Kegoe, Buganda, Vokoli, Mululu, among other villages in Vihiga County, for surrendering their ancestral land to pay way for setting up of government facilities, including the Vihiga District Headquarters, the Vihiga District Hospital, the Vihiga Police Headquarters and Prison, among other areas in Vihiga County. Two, is the Cabinet Secretary aware that some of the original landowners are yet to surrender the original title deed to facilitate transfer of the land to government, implying that some of the public facilities at Vihiga headquarters are lying on private land? Three, what steps has the ministry taken to fast track the demarcation and the surveying of 134 0.8 hectares of settlement scheme boundaries, alteration of Kakamega forest boundaries, and the issuance of title deeds to the intended beneficiaries, considering that the absence of title deeds have been denied settlement schemes, resident essential services, such as healthcare, roads, electricity, among others. Mr. Speaker, allow me to say one thing about this, that even as I'm reading this question, we have an old man who cannot be buried for now over three months because he's one of the people affected by this problem. So I would wish the relevant CS to provide answers to this house as soon as possible. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Now we can go to the member for Meru County, Honorable Bishop Kawira Mwangaza. Honorable Speaker, my question is number 002 of 2021. I'm asking the Teachers Service Commission. One, could the commission provide a status report on the shortage of teachers in primary and secondary schools across the country and further provide a list of schools in Meru County affect, affected by the shortage. Number two, what measures is the commission putting in place to curb shortage of teachers in schools and ensure that learning is not interrupted by the said shortage? 
Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Member for Tindred, please. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, uh, I rise to ask question number 04 of 2021 to the Cabinet Secretary for Transport, Infrastructure, Housing, Urban Development and Public Works. One, could the Cabinet Secretary explain why the construction of Kopere Meteite Timborwa Road is way behind its schedule, its, its scheduled completion date time, and further state the timelines within which the bridges along the road will be completed. Two, what action has the government taken against public officers who supervised and certified the substandard works done on the road, which have been exemplified by numerous portals that have led to accidents? Three, could the ministry consider blacklisting the firm which carried the construction of the said road and deny any contracts in future on account of poor workmanship of the said road. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Very well. So we go to the last question by the member for Butere, Honorable Tindi Mwale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to ask question number 007 of 2021. And my question goes to the Cabinet Secretary in charge of transport, infrastructure, housing, and urban development and public works. Could the cabinet sector explain the cause of road accidents that have occurred along the Buteres Galagala Road, particularly at a spot near Shibanga Secondary School in the recent past, and further state the measures being pursued to address the same? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable members, uh, we are through with the questions, so we, the second part of that particular order are statements. We will start with the, the request for a statement by the member for Dagoretti South, the Honourable John Kiarie, the scout. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I stand to seek a statement and this is a request for statement regarding the establishment of a proposed primary school in Ganda Ward, the Goretti South constituency, a statement which expired in the last session that I want to revive in this session, Mr. Speaker. And Honorable Speaker, uh, pursuant to standing order number 442C, I wish to request for a statement from the chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Education and Research regarding the establishment of a public primary school in Gando Ward in the Goretti South constituency. Honorable Speaker, Gando Ward has neither a single public sports amenity, public primary school, public dispensary, nor public community. I think that the only public education instit institution in this ward is Lenana School, which sits on 220 acres of land, the residents of Gando Ward, therefore, have over the years depended on private learning institutions, some of which are, are either of questionable standards or unaffordable to the citizens. Honorable Speaker, you may recall that on September 23rd, 2019, classrooms in a private school by the name of Precious Talent Academy collapsed, killing eight learners. Following this tragedy, the government, through the Cabinet Secretary for Education, undertook to set up a public primary school within the Lenana School compound in an arrangement that would see the Goretti South constituency and GCDF commit 10 million Kenya shillings and the Ministry of Education providing the rest of the money for the establishment of this school, which was to be ready for the January 2020 intake. Honorable Speaker, despite making numerous attempts to address the matter with the Ministry of Education, 
so as to obtain the requisite clearances for the construction of the new primary school, the Ministry of Education is yet to offer any administrative support and the promised funds required for the establishment of the said school. Honorable Speaker, it is, it is on this account that I seek a statement from the chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Education and Research on the following. Could the chairperson give a statement on the status of the proposed Lenana Primary School, indicating among other things the commencement date for the construction? Two, what plans does the ministry have in place for construction, complete infrastructural development, and provision of adequate, adequate human resource for the said proposed new Lenana Primary School? And three, Mr. Speaker, could the ministry give firm indications as to when this proposed school will be completed and state the timelines for the first intake of learners. I thank you, Honorable Speaker, and I signed this on the 22nd of January, 2021. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Kiarie. Uh, and I would like to receive an indication from the Committee on Education, is it, that uh, when they can be able to answer, uh, I mean, to answer to this statement. The reason why I'm asking that is because today we have got three statements and we have a handful of things that we need to do as a house. So I would rather, if there is anybody who wants to seek clarifications, we'll go to the committee. And that's why I would want uh, the, 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 the chairperson, education, to give us an indication so that members can prepare. And I, is she there, the deputy? Well, the, 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 the leader of majority, of course, who will, you can tell us something on that because you are the, the main link person. So what is, you will, you will yeah, ask in, in them the, to, to do this maybe within the next two weeks? Indeed, I'm aware that uh, she had an commitment this morning. Yes. And she um, told me to make any undertaking. Okay. So within two weeks, okay. uh, the matter will be sorted. Okay. So then we will go to the next one by the Honorable uh, Olago Luoch, member for Kitu Kisumu Town. Kisumu, is it Kisumu West or Kisumu Town West? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, like the request by Honorable Kiari, this request was made towards the tail end of the fourth session, and it lapsed, so I've revived it in the early part of this session. It's a statement regarding illegal acquisition and reallocation of a parcel of land, number LR332-182, in Maseno Township of Kisumu County. Honorable Speaker, pass one to order number Standing order number 442C, I wish to request for a statement from the chairperson, Departmental Committee on Lands, regarding the illegal acquisition and reallocation of parcel number LR332-182, belonging to the National Police Service, Administration Police, in Maseno Township, Kisumu County. On speaker, for the last seven years since 2013 or so, there have been illegal acquisition of the said parcel of land belonging to the National Police Service. The said parcel of land has been partitioned and reallocated to private institutions and developers without the written approval from the National Police Service or the National Land Commission. New numbers have been illegally created out of the said parcel of land and further reallocated to individuals, companies, and other developers. Honorable Speaker, it is against this background that I seek a statement from the Chairperson, Departmental Committee on Lands, to address the following issues. One, when was parcel number LR332-182 in Maseno Township, Kisumu County, allocated to administration police for parade grounds? Number two, under what circumstances was part of this parcel reallocated to private developers, the numbers of the new parcels created out of it, and the identities of the persons or institution to whom the reallocation was done? Number three, what steps are being taken by the Ministry to ensure that the parcel of land reverts back to the National Police Service? And lastly, Mr. Speaker, what action is the Ministry taking to secure all parcels of land in the country that have been allocated to the National Police Service to avoid any further irregular locations and transfers in future anywhere else in the Republic? Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Very well. Now then we'll go to the next one by the Honorable Shaquille Shabir. But before we do that, it's important also that we get some timelines. Do we have the chairperson uh, that is uh, Committee on Lands? So the leader of majority again, we will burden you with the task of, uh, unless we have the vice chair, we'll task you to, with the burden of uh, also asking her, the chair, to respond within two weeks, to have a response. Weeks, yeah. okay. okay, we go to the next one by Honorable Shaquille Shabir. Yes, sir, Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. Honorable Speaker, sir, I have a request for the statement on the destruction of Kibos Mosque in Kisumu County. Honorable Speaker, pursuant to Standing Order Number 442C, I wish to request a statement from the Chairman of the Departmental Department Committee on Administration and National Security on the, on the recent demolition of Kibos Mosque in Kisumu East Con Constituency. Honorable Speaker, on the night of Feb uh, Friday, 5th of February 2021, the government, through the Kenya Railways Corporation, destroyed an 83-year-old Masjid Jamia Mosque in Kibos, Kisumu, in the stark affront to the sanctity of the holy places of worship for Muslims, Christians, and other religions. Incidentally, the original mosque in its corrugated iron sheet structure was built by the East African Railways and Harbors in 1938 and has been regularly updated to this permanent structure that, it was, that was demolished together with the homes of nearly 5,000 residents mostly from the Nubian community. The demolition led to the death of two children who were crushed to death in their houses by bulldozers since they were overcome by the tear gas that was thrown into the mosque and the houses before the demolition. Their bodies were secretly removed by the authorities and the parents have been threatened into silence. Honorable Speaker, Article 43 b of the Constitution gives every person the fundamental right to accessible and adequate housing, while at the same time, Kenya is a signatory to the United Nations Convention on Eviction, which requires evictions to be done in a humane manner, in daytime, and with adequate notice. Honorable Speaker, it is on account of these demolitions, impunity, and the disregard for human and religious rights that I seek a statement from the Department, Departmental Committee on Administration and National Security on the following. One, what was the basis of this senseless demolition of Kibos Mosque and the people in the middle of the night? Two, why did evictions take place at night, which, is, which exposes the evictees to cold and other dangers? Three, could the Cabinet Secretary for Interior and Coordination of the National Government provide immediate and urgent assurances that no other forced evictions will take place anywhere in the country during the current recession, epidemic, and at night? Four, could the government provide assurance that any necessary eviction in future will involve adequate notice, assistance, and resettlement of eviction, ev evictees in a humane and, legal, and legally compliant approach. Honorable Speaker, I, 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 I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable Shaquille Shabir. Now, uh, I, I really don't want to open up this one because we didn't open up the rest, and I can see there's quite a lot of uh, interest. I would be happy to get to know uh, when the chair can respond to this. Maybe, maybe the only person I would, I would, I would allow is uh, Honorable Olago Watch for just one reason. Oh, honorable, no, let, well, the, the other choice is to simply keep uh, off this matter and then you res resolve it at the committee level. Because Honorable, Shabi, uh, honorable Olago Watch had asked the same... Uh, uh, now, you see, I really do not... I, I, I am not very good with the geography of where this particular issue is. But uh, we can have Honorable Lago watch because he stepped down yours and, and stepped uh, and, and, and allowed the Honorable Shabir to proceed. So let's, let's hear something from you. Oh, 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 honorable members, uh, relax, relax, relax. Relax, Honorable members. Let's have Honorable Lago. Mr. Speaker, as much as we are constrained for time, 
This matter has devastated many livelihoods, both in Kimoroni, Kisumu East, Kisumu West, the whole of Kisumu County, Mr. Speaker. And I would really plead with you to let us vent before it goes to the committee. Let the nation hear about what is going on in Kisumu, because this has happened everywhere else in the country, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as soon as Honorable uh, Sakil submitted this request for a statement uh, directed to, to the Ministry of Interior, I also submitted mine directed to the Ministry of Transport and Infrastructure. Mr. Speaker, it was, it was recommended that after Honorable Sakil has addressed the, the, the House, I would also do so, and I ask, kindly ask that you give me just one minute to go through mine, which is slightly different, no, but no, cover no. the same issue. Well, really, I think all you need to do, uh, Honorable Lagu, and you know you are a seasoned uh, parliamentarian yourself, just pick that which you think was not in the request by Me the Honorable Shakil. Thank now, you, if, Mr. You, if you do that, we will save time, and then probably I could, uh, we could save uh, time for a member or two. Mr. Because Speaker, I, I can see it is a bit too... something Mr. that members want to speak to. Mr. Speaker, the terror that was unleashed on the people of Moroni and Kisumu East is the same that was unleashed on the people of Kisumu West. Mr. Speaker, in Kisumu West, it was even worse because there was a new 150 million market that the county had just started at Otonglo Market, which the Kenya Police, uh, Kenya uh, Railways demolished. And this was nearly five, 600 meters outside the demarcated area. Mr. Speaker, what I would like the committee to deal with is to look at the land, land law regime under which Kenya Railways are operating. Are they landlords that, that, that were enacted before independence or after independence? Because in the particular case, Kenya Railways are going far beyond their boundaries. Mr. Speaker, if the, the, the committee is serious, I would really wish that they come to the ground and see the damage that has been caused to the people living in Moroni, Kisumu West, and Kisumu East. So let me hear the member for Moroni then, because you say that is uh, also in your constituency, but briefly. But members, be ready to go and deal with this matter when the response will be brought. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I wish to state that uh, most 80 percent of the, the areas that were affected are in Moroni. And while I believe that we need Kenya Railways to reconstruct and rebuild the railways for the purpose of economic uh, mm -hmm. growth, I really detest the manner, the inhumane manner in which they unleash the terror on the, on the citizenry. Any government in place must, must be ready to, to protect the life of its citizenry and, and the property of those, those citizenry. But now, as we are talking, I don't know which draconian rule that Kenya Railways came with that uh, the Nubian community that we all know came from South Sudan for the purpose of building the railways. And some came for the purpose as, as, as carriers who were helping the colonial government to contain the then ensuing Nande resistance. And they have lived there for ages. I was born uh, finding the Nubian community living in Kibigori, living in Kibos, and I'm very much aware that the Nubian village is far away in Kibos, is far away from the boundary of the railway line. Whatever informed this barbarous and, 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 uh, and, and certain driven uh, notion by, by Kenya Railways to come and not just, just de remove them, but, but the families like the Nubian uh, community were not wanted there to be wiped out. It is very bad and, and I want a statement the government to show the seriousness and what ill, what mistake the Nubian community may have done. As we are talking, I have had a, okay, a scheme okay, of please, promoting please, education. Please not be Children defense. cannot go to school, you have the, their uniforms, books, and, uh, and the foods were that, destroyed. That, that is, that is, and, uh, that's and, okay. And now. immediate arrangements will be made to keep these people alive as, as we are looking for better okay. relocation and, and, uh, and, uh, and other adjudications. Thank Honorable you. Amin Kasim, and probably that should be uh, it. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. For me, just to comment on the... Uh, where is Amin? And oh. for me to comment on... Uh, you, you know, Honorable uh, Members, I, I, hear me I, I hear members on, on. asking why that side. Actually, yes. from here... I am not able to, you know, pick which side the member sits. But most importantly, yeah. you re remember now that because of these COVID issues, members sit anywhere. So really, uh, it is not uh, on purpose. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Honorable Speaker. Uh, and you, you better have your mask on, eh? okay. uh, Honorable Kasim. Honorable Speaker, I think it is important that we need to dwell on this matter quite seriously. And as far as the demolition of that mosque of Kisumu is concerned, this Kisumu Mosque is 83 years old. And the Nubi community that settled in that region 
it came, they came with, and they're marginalized community for that matter. Those in Nairobi and those in so many other places in Nairobi in other parts of the country have settled to support the construction of the Kenya railways. And the fact that they were Muslims, they found it necessary to erect a place of worship. So the wanton destruction of that mosque, which is literally 83 years old, I find it is unconstitutional, is contravening the, the freedom of worship, which is enshrined in the Constitution. So I will say that the Minister for Interior, C.S. Matiangi, should literally be responsible. Okay, so honorable members, I think this we can leave it at that. Which side now? I can't see which side you are talking about. Now, now. Now, now we, will, we will leave it there, yeah, honorable members. We will leave it there. I mean, it is... So we will send it, send it to the Departmental Committee on Transport. And the committee chair should be able to tell us how quick he can respond to this because it is actually extremely urgent. So the chair transport... The chair transport was in, and I saw him. Now... Okay, uh, the, 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 the majority leader, can we make it fast, the two weeks maximum? Yeah, yeah we, should, we should be able to get... Uh, how many? No. I, I, he Let, said let's, many, let's work on the two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. Because also, I think we also need to give it uh, sufficient time to all the details. But what is your point of order, Honda Bokaluma? What's your point of order? Mr. Speaker, I uh, oblige uh, to your direction that the matter goes to transport. Uh, Mr. Speaker, understanding the background of this matter, I was going to suggest without varying your directive, Mr. Speaker, that this is a matter which should appropriately be handled by two committees, the Committee on Lands and the Committee on Transport. This is because, Mr. Speaker, the background information I have, in addition to what we have had here, is that there has been a lot of uh, information cutting across Moroni, Kisumu East to a place called Kanyakwar, Kisumu West going upwards. So in as much as we are going to deal with transport, the issue of where the individual titles end and begin is critical. And I think the Lands Committee being enjoined in the resolution of this matter would be very good. Otherwise, I oblige Mr. Speaker, this is not a matter for administration and national security as initially presented. Okay. Sanko, what is it, Honorable Rahim? What is your point of order? Chair, I think uh, Honorable Shakil has asked the Security Committee to look into it because of the violations of uh, human rights and violations of uh, uh, the, P the mosque which was broken. So you have directed it goes to transport, uh, but uh, Honorable Shakil has asked it for um, from the internal security elements so okay. i want your direction please okay I'm and trying, the mosque should I, be I rebuilt am, I, I am trying to look at that and uh, see so uh, honorable honorable the nominee 001 is it on the committee that you would be happy to have it yes uh, honorable Which speaker one? i also would like to request that uh, such a matter be dealt with maybe several uh, ministries because there are two persons with disability who are tear gas in that particular now, now, mosque now, in that now, particular area. That so if the committee... Now, now with that, I'm sure you are introducing now the committee on social... Uh, labor and social labor and welfare. welfare. <laughs> that is what I'm so, coming to. And uh, actually so that we can protect persons with disability because there is an orchestrated move to, to sacrifice okay. them. We have lost them, several of them, in the recent two weeks. So. Uh, as Kenyans, we really need that matter dealt. So I think the interior, together with the transport co committee and the labor committee, can be co co uh, is it cooperated so that they you can. You know what, what what the members are saying basically is you are almost suggesting now that it should be dealt with as a house. But I thought the statement would still come to the house because the issue is we just are looking for the lead committee. Once we have the lead committee in place, and looking at Kenya Railways, it is under the Committee on Transport. Yes. The rest of the issues can be canvassed around that part, whether there are issues to do with uh, human rights, whether there are issues to do with uh, dis people with disability, 
where there are issues to do with land, like Honorable Kaluma had suggested, mm -hmm. I think those ones we can have a lead committee who can get um, an opportunity to invite. And you know they have the power to invite every other person. So really, it shouldn't be so much about... Then we can uh, go to transport. Uh, the, the committee allow... Let, let's have it... At Honorable Lago, what is it? I, I, and I'll... Yes, Honorable Lago. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I defer to your ruling on this, but I humbly request you, Mr. Speaker, that you make an additional directive on this matter in view of the interest that it has, it has uh, uh, um, attracted and the fact that this is not just happening in Kisumu County. It has happened in other counties. It will happen in other counties as, as the railways revamp their, 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 their system. So because I humbly request you to make a further directive that instead of inviting the other committees, the Committee on Lands, Security and Transport be enjoined to look at this matter jointly, not want to be invited jointly, Mr. Speaker. I am having a problem with that, but uh, let's have a hundred Pukose, then I, we, we close it. I mean, we can't... Uh, please, let us... <laughs> yes, Honorable Pukose. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, sir. I just wanted to add on what... Uh, just on the same line with what Honorable Olako Locha said, Honorable Speaker, that you give further directions because, Honorable Speaker, unfortunately, this eviction has happened even in Kitale, where, where businessmen have woken up in the morning and found all their life loots has been destroyed. Yet we know that Kenya Railways is not going to put up the railway line immediately. It's going to take time. Why did the government decide that to destroy people's livelihood just in one night and leave these people disadvantaged. Okay. So now, I think it's important now, that uh, we have further directions, Honorable Speaker. Just with, a request with the last, to your office. With the last intervention by the Honorable Bukose, I'm now more convinced that actually we should allow... No, 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 no more. Uh, I, I am convinced that we need one lead committee and the rest can be enjoined by virtue of the committee calling calling information from other departments. Because now, you realize we are talking about a national dimension. And the national dimension can only be taken care of by the, 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 the Committee on Transport. Because in other areas, probably there are no issues of human rights. In other areas, probably the, the social aspect of it, like disability, is not affecting them. So the best thing is for us to have that one. If the statement is brought and we are not satisfied, we will make further orders to, conf to make sure that members uh, get uh, the, the sufficient information that he want. Please, let's stop it there, and let's go to the next order. Order number eight, the public order, amendment bill, National Assembly Bill number 14 of 2019, second reading. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Um, by the way, Happy New Year to all members. Uh, um, I stand, Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, to move the Public Order Amendment Bill 2019, um, which uh, um, has got some few amendments as I put them across. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the Public Order Act Chapter Cap 56 is amended in Section 5 by inserting the following... Uh, Honorable list. Kingara, you, you move it. We, we would like you to move uh, this uh, for it to be read the second time. Okay. You know? I, I, Mr. Speaker, I stand to move. Yes. That I stand to move the same order, Public Order Act, uh, Amendment Bill 2019. I stand to move. Be, be read a second time, then you proceed. Oh, to, be, to be read for the second time. Yes, proceed now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir, for the guide. And I proceed, Mr. Speaker, sir. The, the Public Order Act, uh, Cap 56, is amended in Section 5 by inserting the following new subsections immediately after subsection 11. Mr. Speaker, sir, allow me to quote. Uh, in 11a, a person who will at a public meeting or public uh, procession causes grievous harm, damage to property, or loss of earnings shall 
be liable upon conviction to, to imprisonment, imprisonment for a term not exceeding six years or a fine not exceeding 100,000. Mr. Speaker, sir, then in, uh, in 11B, I seek to amend, uh, and it reads as follows. A person, if a person is convicted of an offense under Section 11A, the court may, uh, may order over the above sentence imposed that uh, the person or the organizers compensate the affected persons on such an, uh, a term as the court may deem for proper. Mr. Speaker, uh, the purpose, the purpose for, of this bill, Mr. Speaker, sir, is to, uh, to amend the same sections so that it provides that uh, people who go to demonstration, to demos, do, who, who go to picketing, are liable, especially when uh, opportunists take advantage and follow suit and maybe cause uh, unnecessary harm, even if they were not involved in the same demo, Mr. Speaker. And if you look Order. Members must learn to keep social distance, starting with Honorable Shaquille Shabir there, and somebody who is also going very close to the leader of majority. Uh, please, social distance at all times, unless there are people you live with in the same house. Should, uh, I'm told according to... Uh, so let's, let's keep social, social distance, please, honorable members, and your mask on, because especially I see quite a number of people going very close to the majority leader, and we need him for a long time, you know. So please, I will make sure that I'm protecting the majority leader. Uh, yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, I'm not able to identify some members because of the mask they are put on, so I'm not able. But please, the majority leader must be protected. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for that intervention. It's important that we know that we are in COVID. Tell us, and uh, you, you are very right, Mr. Speaker. Sir. We need our lives and our fellow people's lives. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to put it across that uh, this bill does not concern county government uh, matter, so it can be a, a document of this House. And it is also good to note that, Mr. Speaker, sir, this is a money bill as per the purpose of the bill. Mr. Speaker, I, um, Mr. It, Mr. Speaker, this is a money bill because it will, it will concern some expenses to the exchequer. That's what uh, maybe I meant, but I stand to be guided. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I took some note and maybe tried to uh, reflect back why we have come from, especially for freedom of expression and freedom of, of light. And um, I would be doing harm if I would not recognize the foreign Mr. Speaker who have made us come this far because history is beautiful. I can recall Jaramogi Odinga, Honorable Jaramogi Odinga, Martin Skuku, Honorable Martin Skuku, Honorable Kraito Murungi, Honorable James Olengo, Honorable Kenneth Matiba, and Honorable Paul Maite, Honorable Laila Odinga, Honorable Dr. Mukisa Kitui, and not even forgetting Honorable Wagal Limadai on environment. Remember, we, these people sat and tried, Muturi um, Kegano, I have remembered you, it's only that you are not put in the record here. Uh, uh, Honorable Speaker, these people fought for the right of this, uh, this country, and it, it is mentioned that Kenya, uh, Kenya constitution is in the league of South Africa, where it fought even to, uh, to remove apartheid. But Mr. Speaker, there are some few areas where we, we, are, we need to, to strengthen, especially recognizing chapter four of Act uh, 2017, uh, 27, Act 2017, to four of the constitutional constitution, we talk of equity and freedom of, of demonstration and picketing where women, youth, and people with disability are supposed to be given an opportunity to survive or to conduct their business as, as healthy people are demonstrating. Mr. Speaker, some people just ignore it. And if, Mr. Speaker, if you look at Article 37 of the Constitution, it grants every person, and I quote once again, Mr. Speaker, the right of peaceably and armed 
to assemble, demonstrate, picket, and present petition to public authorities. Mr. Speaker, this means that when you want to picket, when you want to demonstrate, you should give room for others, and you should not. You have picketing and demonstration, Mr. Speaker, should not affect other people. Recognizing Section 6 um, of the same Public Order Act, where regulations are put for where people should demonstrate, where people should picket, and, and leave others continue or conduct their, their, their demos. Mr. Speaker, one would ask, why did you come with this bill? Because I reflected back, Mr. Speaker, and tried to do a survey of the effects of a demo and controlled demo and picketing in our country. And Mr. Speaker, I went to some few institutions, which I will quote here once again, given um, on that opportunity. And I um, pick one like uh, CAPSA, the Kenya Private Sector Alliance. In 2017, Mr. Speaker, and this is, this is in record, during uh, the, the demos which were there in 2017, uh, Kenya government lost 700 billion in, a very, in that very short time of that demand. It means that, Mr. Speaker, there were some opportunists who waited for demos so that they can do their evil deeds. But if there were some control, Mr. Speaker, I think that opportunity wouldn't, have, wouldn't come their way. Mr. Speaker, in the same report and survey by CAPSA, through, uh, with a conjunction with the TIFA in 2016, when the election uh, was notified by IABC, the loss was as follows. And this is a quote, Mr. Speaker, which is also in record through CAPSA. Um, 7,000 shillings, 400 was lost every day per individual in the microfinance. Uh, um, for the small scale enterprises, they lost 21,000 according to the same report every day, Mr. Speaker. And in the large scale sector, they lost about 138 shillings every day, Mr. Speaker. This, this is documented. The hawkers, the small hawker there, in the CBD, around the big towns like Nairobi, Kisumu, Mombasa, and Vika. They lost about 3,000 every day, and you can know how many hawkers we have around. Mr. Speaker, if you look at the banks, people that time when there is a lot, they don't go to bank. According to the same report, Mr. Speaker, you find that the banks, a single day, they lost between 30,000 to 90,000, and also the restaurants, the big restaurants here in town, they have the report, they have given their numbers, which is stand at 150,000 per day during that uh, uh, demonstration. Mr. Speaker, what was worse is the, is the Nairobi Stock Exchange. When people stayed at home, especially for the investors who gave what I call wait and see, the Kenyan government or, or the, the the entrepreneurs in this country lost 50 billion that single day. So you can see, Mr. Speaker, if we continue allowing demos to take their course, we will ruin our, our, our country. We have come from far. We will be going back to where we were if the order is not set. Mr. Speaker, I, know I might not be very uh, straight on it, but since we have a lot of brains around here, we can chip in, they can chip in and come up with modalities of where, how people can demonstrate, people can picket, and also do other things as they consider the lives and, and survival of those who are not involved in the same demo. Mr. Speaker, one maybe would ask, is it doable? And I quote Britain, Mr. Speaker, and Uganda, where they have set areas for demonstration for picketing, and they have set laws of doing the same, so it is done uh, uh, elsewhere in the world. And at the same time, Mr. Speaker, Fiji had the same problem sometimes back around uh, uh, 2016. And they came up with a law in their section 16 where they provided steep penalties or punishment to those who breach the rule, but they were, they were not stopped from demonstrating um, at will if they followed the same route, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the list is long. If you look at um, other regions like um, uh, Zambia, which is not far from us, they have come up with a law which protects demonstrators and also protects its citizens, and they are able to demonstrate, and also other things take course.
very good morning to you. Thank you so much for keeping it KBC Channel 1. My name is Safin Aching Ouma coming to you live from the Maxwell Adventist Church right here in Nairobi on a big day when the country is still in a season of mourning. Uh, mourning former cabinet secretary Simon Nyachai who is remembered as a great nationalist who gave himself for this particular country, served in various uh, senior governmental positions to shape the history of this particular country. He was born in the year 1932 at Nyosia village in the then Nyaribari location. His father, actually what many say, he got his leadership uh, skills at a tender age. His father actually served in the colonial administration as a senior chief at uh, the late Musa Nyadusi and also the mother Pauline Bosibori Nyadusi. Nyachai today, uh, today as he is being celebrated, he died just a moments into uh, the month of February at the age of 88 when he was just about to turn 89 years. He was born on February 6th and of course he has served not just in the civil service but also in the political space. A lot is remembered about this great man who many describe as a man of many fasts. He went ahead to break history and did so many things as a young man and also elevating himself from a low level in leadership to senior positions in government. He was a champion for the poor and the needy in the society. In as much as he was a strict person, any time there was a call for him to give, he was a giver to the people who were bereaved. He was a giver to students who needed his support for school fees and the like. He was a giver to those who needed support with uh, medical issues and of course he's also remembered as somebody who shepherded the journey for devolution in this particular country through his idea for the district focus for rural development way back in the 1980s when together with a few people he came together and came up with an idea that uh, sort of played a role in forming the background on which uh, de the devolution story today rests upon he graced his name has graced you know uh, the government from the time Times when um, Zay Jomo Kenyatta was the president, he then again served the government from the time when uh, the late Mzee Daniel Toroiti Charap Moi took over from uh, Jomo Kenyatta. He went ahead to still serve this particular country during the time of Mzee Mwai Kibaki in different capacities, both as a politician and a civil servant. Uh, remember that uh, you know Mzee Nyachai uh, he retired from politics in the year 19, from civil service in the year 1992. Before before he joined politics, but a lot is remembered about him during his time as a civil servant. Uh, he joined at a young age. Remember, his father was a senior chief in the colonial administration. It is, it is through uh, the influence of Mzee um, Nyandusi that uh, Simeon Nyachai earned himself a position as a district officer in Kisi before he was moved to Machakos. He then went ahead to be transferred to uh, Nyandarwa, now Nyandarwa County, where he served in a position still similar as a district officer. This was still during his time as a, a civil servant in government. And of course, uh, from Nyandarwa, he was promoted to the position of pre provincial commissioner and served uh, the Rift Valley region. It was actually one of the largest uh, regions in, in the country. And it was quite influential because it gave him a very close relationship with the then president, uh, Jomo Kenyatta. And of course, later from Rift Valley, he was moved to the central province at the heart where the president was coming from. And this this actually elevated him to be in the inner circles of the highest you know, uh, positions of leadership in this particular country. And during that time, he influenced a lot of decisions. Uh, perhaps one of the things that Nyacha is remembered for is the fact that in as much as uh, during that particular time, serving in government and being a civil servant, you're required to uh, observe protocol and have a certain um, way of doing things, he was a man who spoke his mind and stood his ground with his decisions. And he could actually challenge what he, he thought was unwise, a direction or a decision that was unwise by the government. He was not afraid, despite the fact that he was part of the government, he was not afraid to speak his mind and uh, he stood his ground whenever he felt that something went against what he believed. So that actually earned him a, a, a soft spot, um, you know, throughout, you know, the, 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 his term as he served in government as a civil servant. Now, in the year 1979, 
heroes to the office of the chief secretary and uh, cabinet uh, secretary under uh, the era of President uh, Daniel Toroitich Arap Moy. This was just moments before he retired from uh, civil service in the year 1992, which really opened up himself. He opened up himself for politics and continued to serve this particular country in the same capacity as a great leader. But he was remembered still as a no-nonsense uh, leader who was very strict and he, you could not easily change his mind. Whenever he made up his mind to do something, uh, he could not be easily swayed. And that actually was something that was quite unique during that time when uh, those who served in government really tried to uh, abide by what was said. Now, in politics, he joined politics in the year 1992, vied thrice and retained his seat in Nyaribari Church constituency. He served for 15 years as the member of parliament for that constituency. And of course, he went ahead. During that time, members of parliament were given a chance to also serve as uh, cabinet ministers, now known as the cabinet secretaries. So Nyachai uh, had the privilege to serve the government uh, during his time in politics also in the ministries of agriculture, the ministry of water, the ministry of roads. He also, um, you know, had a time to serve as the ministry in the Ministry of Energy and, of course, also in the Ministry of Finance. Uh, later on, in the year 2002, he vied uh, for presidency uh, uh, using the uh, Ford uh, Kenya ticket. And of course, this was actually a time when uh, he faced very strict, uh, stiff competition. Uh, bit, uh, he was he faced very uh, uh, stiff competition uh, between, uh, you know, uh, Mwai Kibaki and of course Uhuru Kenyatta at that particular time. All right. And in education, of course, he's a man who is remembered uh, for, uh, you know, having he was he was quite an elite and, you know, studied both locally and internationally. We'll be telling you more about him. But now just, you know, leaders are coming in here to just, uh, you know, be together with the nation as we mourn this great man. I just like to give, uh, you know, a chance uh, to just, just tell us a bit about uh, what you remember about Simon Nyachai and what stands out for you as we mourn him today. Thank you very much. My name is Silvana Zosoro, member of parliament for South Mugrango constituency. Uh, we've come here to mourn... Uh, the late uh, Mze Simeon Yachai, who was a top leader in our country and even in our region, in Gusi, the man that we were looking up to. I remember him most uh, in his resilience in terms of leadership and self-belief. That amidst the challenges that we had in 2002, he still came out to fight uh, to be the president of this republic. It is not a joke. And, uh, you know, he was able to unify the region of Gusi, and today we've lost a hero a person that we looked up to, a person that when we were growing, that we really wanted to emulate and become like him. And that's why today we are here. Many say that he played a very big role in nurturing the young people, the young leaders, and even, uh, you know, just uh, playing a role in ensuring that the culture of the Gusi community is maintained. Probably you can tell us a bit about some of the things that he did that act as a landmark for you. I completely agree with him. I mean, with those who, I share sentiment with those who say that because I am one living example of a person that he nurtured. As a person who used to pay school fees for the vulnerables, you know, and hold meetings for, with young people like myself, you know, tell them that you're the leaders of tomorrow when we exit stage. And, uh, you know, he really tried to open space for every person to feel, you know, the leadership. And um, those who claim, those who say that truly it was a person that nurtured other people are not wrong. And that is why today we are here. That's why I'm a member of parliament, because of his spirit. We learned a lot of things from him, especially the fighting spirit that he had. And that is why we are fighting too. Yes. If you were to just look at some of the issues that are happening in the country today, if he was alive, what do you think he would actually be very passionate about? If Mze Nyachai was alive and younger than uh, he was, or if these years were taken back to the 2000s and 1992s, uh, trust me, the political dimension of this country could have changed. For me, it was the Nyanza region, uh, or Western region, Kingpin. And the truth of the matter is, he was alive. Many of the wars that you are seeing around the leadership in this country, in terms of debates, of uh, constitutional change, it would have heard our voices as Gusi. Because as at now, we lack a common language in terms of constitutional amendment changes that are being proposed. We are so much divided. I mean, every person is taking their sides because we do not have a region, a regional leader that you can look up to. So clearly, 
the political dimension of this country could have changed, he was alive today. Yes. What is it that you, as, as a leader representing the region, you are going to ensure that in his memory, uh, actually you instill as young leaders, as upcoming leaders in the region? It took a lot of time and age uh, and experience for Nyachai to get to where he, he, he got to before he passed on. At 88, and of course in my early 30s, uh, clearly I have a long way to go. But he started his career in the same age that we are in, in leadership. And uh, there is a possibility that in the next coming years, we will also get there. We are looking up to a stage whereby we can be able to grow progressively and also be able to sit on the national table of our politics. And that is what we are focusing on as we emulate Mze, the late Nyachai. All right. We'll allow you time to Thank just you. join the rest of the mourners. Thank you so much. That's Mwishimiwa Silvano Sosoro uh, talking to us about what he remembers uh, about uh, the late uh, Simeon Nyachai. As a young leader from the region, uh, from the political backyard of the late Mze, Simeon Nyachai, he says Nyachai played a pivotal role in shaping the destiny and the future of young upcoming leaders in the region. He actually mentored some of them. He says he's a member of parliament today, courtesy of uh, the mentorship that he got from um, Zay Nyachai. And of course, Nyachai is remembered as somebody who did not just consider his nuclear family his family. He actually considered the entire Gusi uh, community his family. He was very passionate about culture. He actually went ahead to sponsor quite a number of cultural activities in the whole Gusi uh, region to ensure that, you know, what the forefathers and the ancestors used to be very passionate about those things that they used to hold dear is actually preserved to the now generation. So he played a pivotal role in the even in the formation of the Gusi Elders Council, which he acted as a patron until uh, his death. And he played a, uh, th th that council actually uh, assisted the whole community in the Gusi region to stay together and to solidify what they hold dear in terms of their culture, in terms of their beliefs. So during these cultural um, activities that uh, was sponsored by, among others, the late Mze Simeon Nyachai. There was a lot of talk about uh, what the forefathers used to hold dear, the priorities. There was a lot of talk about the song and dance and the food that was there before, uh, you know, this current generation. And it actually brought back what the Gusi community uh, was beginning to, to you know, uh, go away from. And this was just something he, he did in the later days of his life after he had retired both from politics and civil service. So he remained active in cementing the foundations of the Gusi community by just bringing the elders together and ensuring that the young people are nurtured in the process of leadership and even supported quite a number of young people in their education journey. He was known as a giver and attended quite a number of fundraising activities to just help young people quench their thirst for education. If you talk to people who come from the region, they will tell you that um, he was a very strict person but um, had a soft heart for the needy in the community. So Mze Nyechai uh, actually uh, you, people may see him as somebody who joined government at a very early age, but that did not come before he actually uh, took time to um, solidify his education. Uh, in the year 1942, he joined uh, Nyanshua Adventist uh, School for his primary education. Before later, he was uh, transferred to, he, he actually graduated, not transferred to Kereri Intermediate School. Something interesting about his primary days, however, I came to learn, was the fact that um, Nyanshua Chai would walk several kilometers to school. It was not near where they used to live. So he could walk several kilometers to school. So courtesy of that, they could not come back daily. So he, together with some of his um, close relatives and uh, classmates, used to live at a, a place, a relative's home near the school, the primary school, Nyanchu Adventist School, from Monday to Friday before they could make it back home on Saturday. And that went, went on and, and on for a better part of his primary school days. So you can imagine all those kilometers just to go quench your thirst for education. Later he, gra he graduated to join Kereri Intermediate School before he joined Kisi Government School later. Now Kisi Government School is known as Kisi High School. Those of you who know Kisi High School is an alumni of that particular school. Then it was known as Kisi Government School. So Nyachai later joined Kamagambo Adventist College to train as a teacher as a teacher by profession, and that was just uh, during his uh, days when he was pursuing education locally in the country. He's also uh, educated internationally because the year 1957, 
he went to the United Kingdom. Remember, his father was a senior um, senior chief in the colonial administration and had very many privileges. Uh, during that time, uh, very few families could afford to take their children to school. But um, Nyachai, by the virtue that his father was a very powerful man in the community, had the privilege to learn and even go abroad for education. So he went to United Kingdom to study public administration. This was at uh, Tokwe College before he briefly uh, came back to the country and worked as an as African assistant administrative officer in Ukwala. Ukwala is in Siaya County. So this was after he had left the UK to study uh, public administration. So after he was, uh, after his brief employment at African Assistant Administration, as an African Assistant Administrative Officer, Nyachai quit. And actually, many would be surprised to realize this. He worked uh, briefly for the Kenya uh, Breweries uh, Limited. But this was just a brief stint because his father was very strict. Remember, his father was serving in government. And actually, he, one of his desires, uh, the desires of Mze Nyandusi, was that Nyachai, also as one of his favorite sons uh, takes up his legacy to continue serving in, in government. So he was not very comfortable with the fact that Yechai was serving, uh, was working outside government. So during his time at the Kenya breweries, his father influenced his return to government service and actually he was compelled to go back to work for the government and he was posted as a district officer in Machakos before he was uh, moved to Makweni County. So this actually, um, you know, shaped part of his journey back into civil service uh, and uh, you know from being a district officer he later become became a provincial uh, commissioner one of the youngest during that particular time Nachai was a family man. He's remembered as somebody who really created time for his family. In as far as he was traveling from one part of the country to the other, being close uh, with the, you know, the presidents at that particular time and being in charge of very um, many uh, government activities at that particular time, he was a very busy man traversing different parts of the country, organizing events, um, you know, public functions and all that. But he created time for his family. Um, his family, uh, you know, actually uh, celebrated him for somebody who uh, was, was close to what was priority for the family. In the education, he could check the reports of each and every child. He could actually create time for important uh, family functions and also, um, you know, just generally looked at the whole community and the whole village as, as um, you know, the, his extended family, so to speak, and extended his service and his giving to the entire community in the Gosi region. And of course, today, many celebrate him as, as somebody who, um, you know, shaped the history of this particular country. We are just going to be handing you over to uh, the function to continue following up on the proceedings. ODM leader Raila Odinga Ali arrived, the health CS Mutahi Kagwe, the interior CS uh, Dr. Fred Matiangi, uh, former education CS Professor Sam Mongeri, uh, we saw Nyandarwa governor also making his way, ANC leader Musalia Mudavadi, just among the dignitaries who have already made their way to this particular function as the country mourns a great man who shaped the history of this particular country and began the journey of devolution in Kenya. I'll just hand you over so that you can follow up on uh, the live proceedings of this uh, memorial service coming to you live from the Maxwell Adventist Church right here in Nairobi. responsive to the needs and aspirations of the people. Thus, the Kenya government became the first country in Africa to establish a better consultative relationship with the people it served. Nyachai's attitude leadership as head of civil service gave him a condolences far and wide in 1991 book, African Success for Managers of Kenya's Rural Development, David Leonard illustrated the way public policy was made and implemented in Kenya by focusing on four public officials with a great impact on rural development. These included Simeon Nyachai as Chief Secretary and Head of the Civil Service, Harris Mule, the then Permanent Secretary Minister of Finance and Planning, Charles Karanja, General Manager of the Kenya Tea Development Authority, and Ismail Murithi, the Head of the Veterinary Services. As Head of the Civil Service, he protected civil servants and government revenues from misuse. For example, he stopped many unnecessary approvals for duty exemptions on luxury vehicles. 
NHI's forward thinking help the government help the government to reduce parastatal expenditure by introducing the blue number plates to identify public servants and avoid misuse of public resources. The intervention saved the country millions of shillings. Politics. Nyachai officially joined politics in 1992 and served as member for parliament for Nyaribari Chache for 15 years. He had the opportunity to serve as a minister in the ministries of agriculture, water, roads, energy, and finance. In 1998, he was appointed minister for finance and served for 14 months. He endeavored to revive the struggling economy. However, following a cabinet reshuffle and the reassignment of, to a new ministry, Nyachai chose to resign and focus on his role as member of parliament. In the year 2002, he contested the presidency on a Ford People ticket and came third after Mwai Kibaki and Uhuru Kenyatta. At the time, he told Grace, I know that I won't win this presidency, but nevertheless, I will proceed to offer my candidature out of principle. His party won 16 seats in parliament which included all the seats in Igusi, and in 2004, President Mwai Kibaki invited him to join a government of national unity. He first served as Minister for Energy and later as Minister for Roads and Public Works. In 2007, he retired from politics in order to spend more time with his family and business ventures. Throughout his career as a civil servant and a politician, Simeon Nyachai was awarded several colleagues, including the Order of the Burning Spear and the Order of the Golden Heart. Business. As stated earlier, Nyachai was prudent with his became successful in his businesses while in active service. His first business was a tea kiosk, which he co-owned co with his cousin Magara Ondera in Nyanturango market. Around that time, he started a bakery making six, 16 loaves of bread using firewood and distributing it himself on a bicycle after his day job as a revenue clerk. He still has interest in bakery in Ikisi to date. At the same time, he started a portion mill at Nyantirango Market, then ventured into growing pyrethrum and maize at his farm in Manaret Scheme in Sotik. As a small farm producer, he would personally plow using a tractor from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m., while Mwangi, his first tractor driver, did the morning shift later he farmed sugarcane at Sogor on the boundary of Isumu and Nandi counties. While PC in the Rift Valley, he started farming in Mount Narok and the parts of Narok County, and he became one of the largest wheat farmers in the county, in the country. His friend James Mathenge remembers Nyachai as a person who used his 24 hours a day prudently because he was always at work early, put in his eight hours, then rushed to his farm, and I could put in another three to four hours before it was dark. In most cases, he would drive the tractor himself, Madengeri course. The success in farming inspired the development of flour milling enterprises in Nakuru, Nairobi, Kisumu, and even Mombasa, and all of which he owned in association with the business partners. Nyachai diversified his farming businesses into banking, real estate, and insurance, and insurance. Due to his farming activity, Nyachai was appointed a chairman of the then Wheat Board of Kenya and the National Series and Produce Board. He also sat in the board 
of the then Egerton Agricultural College. In his retirement, he managed his expansive business empire uh, from Nairobi. In the year 2012, he was diagnosed with cancer and received multiple treatments both in the UK and in Kenya. He continued to face health challenges with good grace and courage. Discipline, duty, decency, reliability, efficiency, honor, dignity, respect, they are all qualities that Simeon not only held in high esteem, but practiced every day during his time on earth. Mr. Simeon Yachai has gone to rest. He leaves many of us with the pain of his departure, with the memories he gave, the good he did, the dream he kept alive. Mzee Nyechai is preceded by the late Mzee Nyandusi, the late Mama Bosibori, the late Oiruria, the late Esther Nyamboke Nyechai, the late Drasila Kerubo Nyechai, and is survived by Mother Mango Nyechai and Grace Wamuyu Nyechai. Several children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren. May the Almighty God bless the soul of this great son of Kenya in eternal peace. Amen. <laughs> to thank Honorable David Nusila for taking us through that eulogy. It's definite that for statesmen who's lived this long, everything can be crystallized on paper. The family has even a deeper experience. But we are glad that you were able to give us some excerpts that will remind us of the life of Mze. And at this moment, I wish to kindly ask the family members, all the family members of Mze Simeon Yachai, let's just be upstanding, wherever you are. If possible, you could just turn around. If possible, those who can turn, let's just face the congregation. Thank you. You may turn back again. We know that there is so much that you can talk about your grandpa, your dad, husband, a great patriarch. But we are delighted that a few of you will come here and represent you in giving tributes, and subsequently we shall hand over to the state also for them to also give their tributes. Pia Monasana, Liz Komoranche Karansa, Please be seated. Uh, to start us off from the family tributes, we are going to have Sam Nyachai, subsequently followed by Mary Nyachai, and then have David Nyachai, and then have Chief Ayako, followed by Ronnie Ogeto, and then followed by Chief Ayako Nyachai, 
and finally by Pauline Nyachai. And if Charles, there's an amendment, yes? All right. Uh, thanks. Uncle Charles here says that it's Moses and not David. Uh, so, Moses, yes, you shall come after Auntie Mary. So, we'll seek that these tributes be very brief. As, we say, as I've just pointed out, we have so much to talk about. But just crystallize it, use summary, and I know most of you passed in summary. It's a few of us who failed. So, kindly come. Let's begin with you, Sam Nyachai. And uh, if possible, I'll request that we can have the mics here so that we don't have a lot of spraying and cleaning. The next speaker will take the next. So let us also have Mary. Uh, I'll request you some. You'll come and use my mic. And let us have Mary on the next mic. So prepare all the other three mics, please. And then have Moses on the next mic. In the order that I'm calling you, please come and take your mics so that that will help us save time before I hand over to Mr. Mike uh, from the presidency. So kindly let us now get to have Sam and then Mary to follow and uh, Moses and Ch Chief in that order. Please come and take the mics in the order that I've called you. Thank you very much. Morning, church. My name is Samuel Nyachai. Dad, your love towards us was immeasurable. You are always there for us. Dad, you were a disciplinarian, and that shaped who we are. Dad, family was always and always came first. This will be missed so much. Our hearts are hurting right now, but we take comfort in all the cherished moments we had together. We will miss you, Dad, but God loves you more. Fare thee well, Dad, till we meet again. Thank you. To have departed father, I never imagined that one day I would be standing here paying a tribute to you. Today I just want to say thank you for all your love, unconditional love. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your tolerance. Thank you for your discipline. Thank you for all the good qualities that you instilled in us. We promise you, and I believe I'm speaking for all my siblings, we promise you that we'll do our very best to preserve your legacy for as long as we live.
may God give you peace, eternal peace and rest till we meet again. Thank you, darling. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Moses Nyandusi Nyachai. Um, in a moment of inspiration or possibly madness, I decided to try and collect my thoughts and put them in a form of a poem, uh, which I'm going to read through. I should add in advance that I'm an accountant by profession, so any literature critics out there, please just cut me some slack. It's hard to say goodbye to you. You meant so much to us. The influence you had on all our lives will forever remain untouched. From the moment each one of us started school, your message was consistently clear. If we fail to take our education seriously, the consequences would be dear. Family meant everything, and yours was larger than most. The fact you were able to manage us all deserves a daily toast. You annually brought us together to enjoy Christmas in Kisi, a wonderful time for us to bond with the wider family tree. 26th December was always memorable, and your routine I'll never forget. The front gate was always packed with visitors looking for your help. You placed your chair in the middle of the drive and tended to each one from early in the morning for several hours until they were all done. The afternoons were a jolly affair, and one that I hold dear, celebrating my birthday with lots of cake and cheer. As evening came and festivities died down, our hearts started pounding hard. For the 26th was also the day you read all of our report cards. The format was simple with you by the fireplace, your face especially stern. We'd all line up in the living room and step forward when it was our turn. Sweaty palms and trembling knees were the order of the day. As you called us forward, we steeled ourselves to listen to what you had to say. If you were pleased, we thanked the Lord while finally taking a breath, then stood aside to allow the next son to come and meet their fate. If we underperformed, you didn't hold back, your th booming voice thundering comparing us to various creatures, none of which were flattering. As tough as it was to be at the receiving end of a lashing from your tongue, it was probably harder to keep a straight face when it was somebody else's turn. Whilst report card day was a tense affair, it never resulted in a thumping. That energy was always reserved for occasions more deserving. For those of us that tasted dad's belt, and believe me, we were many. The truth of the matter, on all occasions, justification was aplenty. The degree to which he would dish out pain depended on the crime. How he was dressed when confronting us indicated what was in line. If fully clothed, chances are the slaps would be short and sweet. Unless, of course, you decided to block, in which case he would take it to the streets. It's a proper workout was imminent if you saw dad with his belt. He'd slowly walk up to you, steely-eyed and in a vest. In hindsight, I think his slow approach was to give us a sporting chance. Three to five seconds to stretch our limbs before the chase began. Your love of country music, dad, is something we all recall. From Kenny Rogers to Don Williams, Dolly Parton et al. You loved listening to the music and had a large collection of tapes. We knew if you damaged any of them, it was time to emigrate. Whilst we all know that dad was tough, I think it's fair to say, he showed his love for each one of us in many, many ways. We remember you, dad, for the man you were and will forever be unique. The hardest working and most principled man we are ever likely to meet. 
As a father and provider, you truly were second to none. The bar you set for all of us will never be outdone. We continue to raise our children with the values you held true. Our hope is our kids look at us the way we look at you. Throughout your entire life with us, it was plain for all to see. Your supreme achievement as head of the home was maintaining family unity. And though you are no longer with us, Dad, that message remains profound. So we ask you, Dad, please rest in peace knowing we won't let you down. Thank you. Before I can begin this tribute, I first have to say hi, Dad. As far back as I can remember, a day would rarely go by without me saying hi to my dad, and at least once a day. And I intend to keep that tradition going. As Dad's youngest, I currently hold the title of most talkative. And while I could spend the entire day telling you about my dad, I will live in myself to telling you one simple truth that my family and many of you can attest to. My father was an amazing man. Not simply because of his achievements in his career or the way he supported his children, but because he quite literally amazed you. Dad always kept us on our toes, and if you ever thought you knew what he'd do next, he'd surprise you. One such moment was back when I actually looked like the baby of the family, and I was hot off winning a race at sports day. I decided to challenge dad to a race in the house. He agreed, and of course my ego had me convinced that I would be the champion that day. My brother yelled, go, and I sprinted with all my might, thinking I had left dad in my tracks. Then I felt this gust of wind, and like a magic trick, he was already at the finish line. Now some of you might think, Dad should have let me win. But instead that day, he chose to teach me an important lesson. Presume nothing. Last weekend I heard a pastor preach about the importance for parents to know the difference between presence and being present. While some might imagine that Dad spoiled us with presence, the true gift he gave all of us was his presence. On behalf of his daughters, I know we are all proud to say that we are daddy's girls. Not simply because dad was our hero and supporter in so many ways, but because he instilled many of his own traits, such as integrity, determination, and inner strength in each of us. So much so that we proudly stand here today we stand here proudly today to be called our father's daughters. Dad was a man who loved us unconditionally and always wanted the best for us. He pushed us to do our best and the best we could poss and be the best we po could possibly be. The tough love has borne fruit and equipped us to face the world in whatever circumstances we find ourselves. While growing up, Dad always emphasized the importance of hard work, honesty, kindness, humility and independence of mind. This was the only way we could walk and stand tall in all circumstances, particularly when we were, he would no longer be with us. For this we will forever be grateful, Dad. We are who we are because you were. For everything you did for us, we are forever grateful. You went beyond the call of parenthood. The discipline you instilled in us continues to be imparted on our own children and grandchildren. They often crap, crack up when we tell them stories of growing up with dad. 
The disciplinary measures, when one stepped out of line, were dished out accordingly and without fear or favor for both your sons and daughters. Thank you, Dad, for treating us all equally and giving us each, each one of us equal opportunities, some, something not many could or would have done. Dad, there are not enough words in this world to express how much we love you and are going to miss you. But we move forward. Excuse me. But we move forward with our heads held high, carrying within us all the love you gave us and wisdom you instilled. Farewell now, Dad. We love you and miss you always. Thank you. Matthew 23, 11, Jesus was having a discussion with the Pharisees and the disciples, and he was trying to explain what it meant to live like God. In Matthew 23, 11, he explicitly shares with those that he was communicating with that the greatest amongst you must become your servant. There are a lot of things we can say about our, for my uncles and aunties, fathers, grandfathers, friends, families, members of the Kenyan community. But the one thing that I know I will always remember is the fact that my grandfather was not just a leader with a title because titles don't mean nothing if you are not serving those you have been called to. My grandfather was not just a public servant, but he was a servant to his family members. He never thought of himself better or any higher than um, his children, his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren. In fact, many times when we came to Loreshel, he was very explicit. Then Yandusi, you're sitting down, we are bringing you juice, we're bringing you tea and we are going to serve you. And I always say he, served, he treated us like a king. And so for me, as I remember my granddad and as I continue the legacy and as I serve those who God has called me to, I want to be remembered as a servant like my grandfather. And lastly, I'll finish this. It would be foolish of me to not say this. It has been a very challenging traumatic experience losing a hero to all of us. But I want to selfishly say, I honor you, Dad, my father, Charles Nichai, for taking on leading our family as the oldest son, watching you selflessly lead without an ego, not because you are the firstborn son, but because you took on that servant leader heart of Sokoro. Right now, as, as he is in heaven, he is deeply proud of you. And I'm honored to know you as your son.
Good morning, everyone. Um, I might not be a very good preacher like my, my dear cousin Yendusi, but he has given out a very good word. And I'm here on behalf of the grandchildren of Mze to read a tribute to our beloved Sokoro. And I have all the grandchildren, please stand so that I can see you, please, as I read this. We are all deeply saddened by our loss. Our beloved Sokro, our friend, confidant, and mentor, you have left us. However, we know you would want us to know that you are in a good place and that you are watching us all with your contagious smile across your face. You have raised such a beautiful and special family and we are truly blessed and to have experienced your wisdom and kindness and love. You taught us priceless lessons in life, such as the importance of waking up early, doing all that we can when it's still and quiet. You preach to us, weka effort yote. Weka effort yote. And to always speak the truth even when it hurts. We will miss your wisdom of many years of experience and the pure love of an understanding heart. You are always a great storyteller and we shall never forget visiting you and living with so much knowledge as well as aching ribs due to the laughter. This we shall always have as loving memories in our hearts. You taught us the importance of family, as well as forgiveness and unconditional love. You also taught us the importance of standing firm in what is right, being people of integrity, and most importantly, that nothing in love in life comes easy except through working hard. It is truly, it truly hurts us to say goodbye. By deep down, we shall have comfort in knowing that this is still, this is still we meet again. Rest well, our dear Sokoro. And P.S. Hey, hello to our Baba. You may sit down. Before I finish, I'd like to say there are three key things I learned from my grandfather. Number one, family responsibility. Ten years ago when I was getting married, I went to my late Baba. I told Baba, I found this girl and get married. She gave me a blessing and told me, do the same thing. Go see your granddad and tell him you're doing the same thing. So I went to my grandfather. We met, sat down, had tea. All went well. After two days, my grandmother, Grace, calls me. Tells me, your Sogoro wants to see you, go to his office. So I kept on asking myself, is there something wrong I've done? What, what's going on? So I went to his office. It was about uh, quarter to one. For those who have been to his office, when you enter his office, there's a place where you see the CCTVs and there's a radio. So I sat down, we started having tea. It was exactly 1 p.m. 
And you know KBC, that sound, tick, tick. It's news time. He told me, just wait. I was having my tea. He was listening to his uh, news. When he finished, I came and sat next to me. And he asked me one question. Wanakubwa, that's what he used to call me. Ron, Wanakubwa, are you sure you're ready to start a family? Are you completely sure? I told him yes. And from that moment, there are quite a number of things he told me. And I left that office as a blessed grandson and ready to start a family by his blessings. The second thing he taught me, choose your friends wisely. We all have friends. You have a friend who can just be a friend because they want to gain something from you. Is one they are friends because they know what you're capable of doing. But I've seen his friends. I've seen Mzee Madenge, how long, how many years they've been friends. Imam Silla. He taught me that I need to choose my friends wisely. Even my friends who are there, they know how I deal. The third and last is your level of integrity should be very, should be up there. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you very much. At this moment, we're going to have the great-grandchildren. The great-grandchildren, you've seen uh, the grandchildren. Please, Angela, come with me. Come around over here. And uh, we seek that uh, we have uh, adjustments for mics for them, please. And um, before they speak, I'm going to request, uh, we have relatives. You know, this is a large family. And we're going to seek kindly all the guests. We seek for your indulgence. Mze had and has a big family. So it will take time, but we'll get there. So the relatives of the family of Mze Nyachai, can we be upstanding, even those who are at the balcony? Yeah? The relatives, please, let's be upstanding wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. We have the in-laws who are all here and the close family friends. We might not have an opportunity for you to speak. That will be done at home, but we really, really recognize you. And then we also have um, the friends, friends of Mzenya Chai and family friends. Please, wherever you are, kindly let us reverently stand up. The friends. Yes. Oh, amazing. Ah, just keep standing, please. Keep standing. And uh, we will have um, Engineer Wambora and um, Mze Niza Juma and uh, Moses Mwendwa to speak on all of your behalf, so Waziri Nawona Nyote, Mshimiwa Msali, and all of you, yeah, and uh, just in case I don't mention your name, I see you, Senator uh, Ongeri, and uh, Waziri here, and also Waziri, I hope we are observing the health protocols, Waziri Kagwe, yeah, 
Yeah, and I can see you stood so you can even turn around just to ensure that we are observing. Yeah, indeed we are. We are compliant. And to all of you, even right at the back, I can see Sagero and the rest, please, we recognize you all very, very kindly. Mze Mainda Nyote Tumewaona na familia inajua mko hapa, ata wale mko balcony, and even those in the tents. So right now, my little nieces, are you ready? So who's starting? Ashley. Okay. Ashley. So blessed to have seen our great grandpa. He always told us to come him than than the uh, not so cruel like our parents. He made us a funny room sound and he laughed as we were so scared. He always He always gifted us when we visited him, and especially if you give him a hug. I remember I got my first violin like that. Tata, we think your birthday will be even more fun in he was even more fun in heaven with all the celebrations. Go well, Tata. We will miss you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, you're awesome, very awesome grandchildren. They are great, by the way. Yeah. And um, before I bring in the friends, uh, allow me to bring, uh, you know, in Kisi traditions, it's not possible for me to call uh, my grandmother by her name, but uh, just because it's a function. Grandma Grace, uh, please come and uh, speak to us and uh, tell us a little about your loving husband. It's been wonderful. You have seen you all the days, even during at hospital with him. And uh, may God bless you for the nice work that you've done. And also not forgetting, Mwonginababa, Marita, Naengo Chorokwane. So please, uh, we can uh, take care of this mic. It is still morning. Good morning. My husband, my dear friend, Simeon Nyashai. The pain of losing a husband and a dear friend is like no other. We have traveled together through our life's journey. Simeon was always completely true to himself, and from when we met, he was clear who he was. Extremely honest, loving, hardworking, and above all, someone who believed and honored God. Our morning and night prayers were always on top of his days program. I must say here that during these very difficult times, the way I knew that Muse was better is when we prayed in the morning and he said amen, and then I knew that he is better. Simeon took it upon himself to train me in many aspects of life, 
He encouraged me to be bold and stand for what was right, regardless of what others said. Whatever decisions he made, he would have thoroughly thought them through and could therefore defend them anywhere and any time. When he instructed me to resign from my employment, it was not a request, and he set up Sansora Group Limited Head Office in 1984. I was fearful, but he reassured me that he knew what he was doing and how right he was. My deepest joy in my marriage to Simeon was his deep love and care for his children. Despite his very busy schedule, balancing his business and public service, I'm grateful that at home, he would ensure that he made time for us. He set clear boundaries and often emphasized to the children that if they listened and followed his guidance, they will be the ultimate beneficiaries. It is a true blessing to witness the close bond he continued to have with his children until he rested. God bless him with life to witness and celebrate their successes. Simeon dearly, dearly loved our parents. And I keep on telling our children, I believe because he loved our parents and he honored them. God blessed him because the fifth commandment is the only one with a promise. You honor your parents and your days will be increased. I saw it with your father. Engaging me as his assistant in the Nyaribarishashe politics was like throw, uh, uh, it was like being thrown in the deep end of a swimming pool. I never stood in public before. I had nightmares. But when the community embraced me, I enjoyed being part of them. When he officially left politics in 2007, I found myself still deeply attached to the community, to the constituency, and up to the time he rested, I was actually his main source of political news. I had, of course, to assess his mood. Mzee showed me the world figuratively and literally, and for 50 years, he was my friend and my companion. As a member of the World Scout Foundation, we visited several country, countries in the world. We knew each other so well that we knew the, when the answer, what the answer would be for each other's questions, either, even without having to say a word. He took li the love and time over the years to invest in me. And so when the time came for me to truly follow the vows, for better or worse, in sickness and in health, I had no hesitation to do everything possible to look after Muse. I'm very grateful to God that he kept me well and strong to do this till the very end. Simeon's generosity across board was no, has no comparison. He reminded me again and again that whatever he owned was blessings from God. He always felt, he therefore always felt the need to share with others as his way of thanking God. I knew that he was involved in many, many churches, projects, but during the last almost two weeks, what I have heard, I did not know that he was so involved in all those projects, churches, hospitals, schools, name it. I didn't know about it. And this just confirmed what he always told me about the need to share the blessings God had given him. Knowing that Simeon sincerely loved me, kept me going, 
as I nursed him through his prolonged illness. I could have done anything in this world for more time with my beloved husband. But as he always told me to trust in God's plan for us, I know that this too is part of that plan. Please allow me to just say this. I know there is somebody who will be acknowledging uh, our passing a vote of thanks, but I want us to say that during our time in 2018, when he was in the ICU in, in the hospital in Cromwell, and he, the, His Excellency, the President, Uru Kenyatta, visited him in the ICU, we were amazed. When he saw him, it was like some kind of medicine to see him from home. And I must say that the improvement was drastic. I just want to take that moment. I know somebody else will do it to really appreciate that visit because it made such a difference. A couple of months later, his mother came and again visited Muse. This time he was, he was not in the ICU, but I could see the joy even having to share old stories. We do appreciate. I know there are very many, many other people who came there and here. And I just felt that from where I stood, I needed to acknowledge that past family to have come all the way there and the difference it made in his recovery. That the day will come when we will be reunited. But until then, I shall miss and love you always, and we will celebrate you and all you have taught me and our children. May God bless you us all in eternal peace. Love, Grace. And at this moment, after getting to hear those wonderful words from Mama Grace, I really want to thank you, Mama, and we continue to pray for you and put you in the Lord for comforting. And now, let's get to hear from Magokoro, Mongna Mama Marita, that is Charles' mom, and mom to also Ken there. Ken, your hair is already white, whiter than your mom's. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah, she's still. Nirangi, you're white. Okay. Thank you very much as you adjust. Maokorukwana. I'm Chamba, Fashavi, Wambingo, Ninote. I'm a chambo. Mimi. Now I should go to Chaku. Serekei. Muse went to Pere Mansangu Alisema. Na chua kila mtu anapenda mse wake. Lakini, wengine hata waki wamba niso ama kupiwa, awasi kusema kama ameenda, ata alikuwa ananipiwa. Mse, ana, alikuwa anatupenda, ata watoto wetu, Mutota was a gusema. 
ati papa yake ari mpira labda mimi nilikuwa na wapira si nivyo wacha tu wacha tu wacha tu wacha tu kwa hivyo eh, siku yake ilifika tunaomba Mungu atusike tumo tukimuomba kwa yale masuri atatusaidia asante sana kwa nini kusherekea hii alusi ya msee wetu thank you ah uh, she, she also has a a tribute on the program summarized in english if you want to attend to it thank you thank you so much maokorumbiamono and thank you very much ule ningeomba ungetandika saidi ungechapa ken anatusumbua hapa nje sana lakini hata sasa hivi ulifanya kazi mzuri because is a good man na huwa anatunulia chai wachenjire God bless you. Thank you very much. I I now wish to uh we, we are just crossing over so that uh, and I really love the patience that I'm seeing today right from uh, right honorable Amolo Raila. Uh you you are patient and I am feeling it. I wish how we would move this faster so that we can also get to hear from also the cabinet secretaries and the rest. So for now, Engineer Wambora and uh, Mze Niza Juma and Moses Mwendwa, uh, just come, the three of you, yes? just come up front, the three of you, in the way I've called you, so that uh, uh, we can recognize you and uh, have you just say a word very quickly, just come up front next to me. You'll get a mic here. We'll take care of you. Don't worry. We'll make sure we take care of you. Thank you. Pole Pole and uh, uh, the deacons on standby. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, you'll get your mic over there. And thereafter, I will request that we have uh, Mike Gitone standby so that uh, we can have you uh, take over the rest of the program so that we can get into the divine service and uh, very quickly we should uh, be leaving subsequently. So please let us now have Mze Engineer Wambora, Tafadali Uwa Kwanza, and uh, the three of you, just each one of you on one mic, yeah, each one of you will start in the order that you are standing. Please, Engineer, Karibu Sama. Good afternoon, everybody. This is the first function where I managed to stand in front of so many people after a period of close to three years because I've been sickly too. Mzenya Shai was a good colleague of mine, a mentor, and uh, a man whom one would have loved to associate with. I joined the ministry of, um, of the government in 19... 68, and I found Nyechai was already in the provincial administration, doing pretty well. I was a young engineer, rose through the ranks in the ministry to chief engineer roads, and then permanent secretary for uh, about 13 years uh, in the Ministry of Transport and Communications and Agriculture. It is at the Ministry of Agriculture where the two of us, that's Honorable Mze uh, Nyashae and myself, work together. And I can assure you that here is a man whom one would love to say he is associating with. Very highly principled and somebody who is uh, result-oriented, meaning if he was doing anything, he would set a target and would ensure that he has a way of monitoring whatever was going on. 
not just saying the project is ongoing. He wants to see results and results within a specified period. One project that uh, put us together was the rural, uh, rural development, which is now translated into devolution that we hear about. I can assure you that the seven districts which were set aside for that experiment, uh, much was done and uh, Simeon Yachai was the brain behind the whole of that. Now, many people got employment, go, ch children were able to learn that whatever they were seeing at the grassroots level was their own because they selected, because they constructed if they were roads, because they maintained, and they preserved those facilities because they are for their, their own good. I would like to say that uh, we are missing Nyeshae, we'll continue missing him greatly. And before I finish, I would point at that lady there, being my wife. She's uh, Mary Akelo, a nurse by profession. And to all of you, I, I say you miss somebody whom one would wish to continue associating with. May God bless his soul in eternal peace. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> I am proud to be able to say that Simeon was my friend. Long, long time ago, we became friends. So although, of course, I knew Charles and Kennedy, but I also knew Maina and Yandusi when they were this high. And I've seen them grow up. He was a man of integrity. I have seen, when I traveled into Nairobi airport with uh, Simeon, and Grace was with us, I have seen, seen him tell the customs people to go through the baggage of Grace because she's brought a lot of things in there. <laughs> That's the kind of man he was. I have learned a great deal for, from him over the years. And um, there are very few that has his kind of principles. And he was always proud to say to Grace in front of all of us that I have ruled over you Kikuyus for 10 years. <laughs> and he really enjoyed saying that. And um, so he was a very lovable man very easy to be friends with, and we will miss him. And uh, just for him to be around was something that we all felt good about. So go well, my friend. Be well wherever you are. I'm sure you will do deals with God as well, and you will have a very high place wherever you are. It has been nice knowing him. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, it's good afternoon, all of us. Uh, my name is Moses Mwendwa. And maybe I should start by saying I was taken by surprise because I didn't know I would be asked to speak. But that said, I have reason to thank God that Honorable Mze Nyachai was my good friend. You'll be wondering how I would say he was my friend. Mze Nyachai, those, I know there are some here who have seen here, knew that he worked with my father many years back when he was appointed DC in Nyahururu. I think that was the first time I knew him. A lot of people didn't know that. And they worked with, he worked with my father in, in Nakuru when he was appointed PC. 
My father was a provincial accountant. And in Nyeri, when he was PC, my father there was also a provincial accountant. But my relationship with him came much later. When he knew I was the son of Joseph and he didn't know I was in Nairobi. And we became very close because he involved me in a lot of his work. He was a mentor to me. He taught me a lot of things. I met a lot of people through him, and these people became my friends. So for me, what I can say, and like I, he always said, I was a son of Honorable Nyachai. Because every time we sat down to discuss, maybe in a board meeting or somewhere, he would tell those sitting with us that this man I worked with his father, so he is my son. And I accepted because he said, I'm an adopt I am an adopted son of the Nyachais. I'm happy to say here one thing that I've seen. The, group, the grandchildren and the children of Nyachai have said one thing, that they will speak, they will stick to his motto, respect, integrity, and love for one another. They have said that they would not let Muse down. We've seen many families, after the head of family has departed, mess account, uh, the family, the businesses, and the rest. I can tell you one thing that I know. Mze was very organized. I would sit with him for hours in his office discussing various things. And I can tell you Mze was organized and he loved his family deeply. He loved the whole family and all the children were loved and he had special love for each child. And the mothers here, those who are gone, because I knew, I knew them, I met them, and those who are here, Mama Charles, mother, and Mama Grace. He would tell me about the care Mama Grace took to ensure that he got well. And sometimes I would be very touched, knowing that he would tell me, look, many people don't know the importance of a wife. Being careful, he would say, look, you do not know that an, a man who is not married misses a lot. When you get old or you are sick, you need a wife to take care of you. And he said he has reason to thank God because he has the wives who took care of him. He has grace who took care of him. He was like a child to grace because she would do everything for him. He was proud of the achievement of his children. Like Charles here, like all the others, all of them, he was proud. And you remind me that the first thing he liked and he admired was the performance of his children. And he kept their certificates You'll be surprised. He kept the certificates and he would not give them until later. Maybe even if you are given an, an item, he will keep that certificate. Tell you that is yours, but it's not yours when, until I'm gone. So please, my advice is respect and honor your father's advice. Stick together, love one another, be firm, grow that organization, the businesses that Muse had. Grow them. Don't mess. Stay together, stick together, love one another, and Mze, wherever he is, he will be blessing you. That's the only thing I can tell you. Me, he was a father, and he helped me in many things, in many ways. Advice and my other personal problems. So for me, he was a father and a great friend. So that's all I can say. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very, very much, uh, um, Moses Mwendwa. And I think to the family, 
the blessing has been pronounced by Mzee's friends. Lee, Mike, Tuakina Nyandusi, Sam and the rest, Noah, the grandchildren, the tone has been set. And I think the blessings that you will get even from the prayers, for sure you shall leave the legacy of Mze. I now wish to bring uh, uh, Mike Gitone from the presidency to take us on the other beat. And subsequently we shall then uh, go to uh, the reading from Psalms 121 that shall be done by Noah and have a hymn uh, by the mother's voice and we shall be culminating by the sermon by Pastor Irere. Thank you very much for listening to me. I know I forgot to introduce myself. My name is uh, Jeff Omambia, a serving elder in this church. Welcome, Mike, and carry on. I take cognizance and uh, pass my apologies and uh, condolence to the family, distinguished leaders, the clergy and the family members uh, of the Fourth Estate who are present. We all gathered here to demonstrate the love, the respect that we had for our hero and give comfort to the family friends, and all of us who have met together here, as we mourn, and also give thanks to God for the opportunity he gave us to have our father, Honorable Simon Nyachai. Words cannot completely express our views and feelings about this great leader, but one thing I know and I believe firmly is that uh, he has fought a good fight, he has kept his faith, and now he has rested in peace. It's all upon us now to pray for the family that uh, they emulate what daddy trained them. As it was alluded earlier, we have a number of leaders present, and uh, as we were requested, we'll be brief so that we give the service the respect it deserves. And uh, I wish now humbly to invite the Chairman of the Council of Governors, Honorable Governor Wambora, on behalf of the Council to come and pay his tribute and acknowledge the other Governors who were present. Karibu Chairman. Good afternoon. <clears throat> the, the right honorable Prime Minister, I don't do yeah. <clears throat> the family of Honorable Simeon Nyachai, the Honorable Federal Excellency Governors, uh, cabinet secretaries, members of uh, the senators with us here, members of parliament, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Council of Governors, I wish to first and foremost convey my heartfelt condolences to the family of Honorable Simeon Yachai and the Bagusi community as well as the people of Kenya at lunch for the loss of a great Kenyan patriot. Even as we mourn the loss of the late Mzee Nyachai, let us celebrate him for his distinguished public service, 
which contributed to Kenya's economic growth. I have personal vivid memories of Honorable Simeon Nyachai as a very committed and towering provincial commissioner whom I used to admire while I was a young provincial administrator. I knew him as a very competent and tough public administrator. However, even as tough as he was, he had a lot of compassion and, and also patience with the young officers in the service. I only remember one occasion uh, when we had a meeting on district focus for rural development, and he was the chair, and we were young DOs and DCs. And I, I, the others urged me to ask him a question, why those of us whom he had sponsored to America and the US, about 50 of us, when we came back with masters and postgraduate diplomas, why we could not be promoted. He just laughed at me and told me, young man, it's not the degree which can make you be promoted, but I hope your degree will make you efficient and work well so that you get promoted. As a result of his excellent performance as a PC, Honorable Simeon H.A. was promoted in quick succession to higher positions of permanent secretary in charge of district focus for rural development. And thereafter, he was soon promoted to the then most powerful position in the civil service, the post of chief secretary. After Honorable Simon Nyachai retired from the civil service, he became a member of parliament for Nyaribari Chache constituency. He later served as, a, as cabinet minister in various uh, uh, ministries. The legacy of Honorable Simeon Nyachai will be remembered for many years for his contribution in the various sectors such as the public service, district focus for road development, and also in the various ministries, agriculture, cabinet affairs, water, roads, energy, and finance. As I conclude, Muse's rich legacy will remain embedded in the history of Kenyan nation for his distinguished contribution to the country's economic growth. His rigors will also be projected by those he mentored. And some of those he mentored are with us here, such as Waziri, Dr. Friend Matiangi, and many others. They will progress his legacy including uh, his dear son, Charles uh, Nyachai, and many others. May the Lord God comfort the family of Honorable Simeon Nyachai, and may the Lord God also rest his soul in eternal peace. Asante. <clears throat> Thank you. May I now take this opportunity to introduce the governors who are with us so that they can wave to the the one uh, to the, the congregation, starting with Governor James Ongwai, who is actually the late Nyachai's governor, Asante Sana governor. Then we have Charles, I mean Nyandarwan governor, Honorable Kimemia, who is also the chairman of the Central Region Economic Block. Is there any other governor around? Okay. Then, of course, we have the, the, the deputy. The deputy Governor Kisi, Joas Mangi, Kuna Wengine, that's it. Asante Sana, may God bless you. Asante. Thank you so much, uh, COG Chair, Governor Wambora. It's also important to mention that he's uh, sitting next to his deputy, Governor James Ongwai, who is a good friend of mine. 
I'm being requested by Jeff that KW, KBY one t you requested kindly to move very fast to your car. There is a patient whom you've blocked. KBY one t I most humbly now wish to invite the Cabinet Secretary for Interior and National Coordination, Dr. Fred Matiangi, kindly to take us forward the next program. Karibu Waziri. and uh, to respect the church traditions, I would like to request that we conduct this segment of the speeches in the most precise manner. And therefore, before I say anything, I'm going to ask two national leaders to say something. And then after that, I will make some remarks and invite the Cabinet Secretary for Health, the Honorable Senator Mutai Kawe, who is representing His Excellency the President to deliver the President's message. And uh, to start us off, I would like to invite the Honorable Musalia Mudavadi to make a two-minute remark. Then I will invite the Honorable former Prime Minister, Honorable Raila Odinga, before we basically complete this segment. Oh, sorry, yes. I've seen the former Vice President Kalonso Musioka is here. I'll also invite you. Sorry, I had not seen you. Mama. Martha Nyachai, Mama Grace Nyachai, the entire Nyachai family, Charles Nyachai. Bear with me. Masks are part of our life. I'll avoid trying to name people individually. But I'll sum it up as friends of Nyachai. Let me take the first opportunity to pay my deepest condolences on my own behalf and indeed on behalf of my wife, Tessie, who is with me here today. She is like a younger sister to Mama Grace Nyachai. Let me execute my two minutes as follows. I served in the same cabinet with Mzenya Chai. As young as I was then, he was like the elder brother in that cabinet. I was a minister for finance, he was a Minister for Agriculture. I served my five years as Minister for Finance, and he did his term as Minister for Agriculture. After the 1997 elections, we switched positions. I became the Minister for Agriculture, and he became the Minister for Finance. A very thorough individual, very professional in approach, very candid, fearless. He always humored up cabinet sessions. But perhaps when one looks at Nyachai, you also see somebody who stood for merit. He didn't believe in shortcuts. The integrity of the public service 
was perhaps at, at its highest during the tenure of Simeon Nyachai. As the Chief Secretary, I can tell you I saw moments that were both hilarious but very strange. When Simeon Yachai was Chief Secretary, ministers used to address him as Sir. Can you imagine? Ministers would actually call him Sir because he carried a lot of dignity in that office. There was even talk that sometimes if Simeon Yachai called a PS or called a provincial commissioner somewhere when he was the chief secretary, it is rumored that the PS or even the chief secretary would actually stand up to talk on the phone when even Simeon Yachai just in case he's watching over you. This was him. And as I conclude, I just say that also as a politician, I had my encounter with him. I attended his cultural events at Nyantarugo, Nyantarago uh, Stadium, just to attest to the fact that those who say he loved culture, he did. He was a good man. He stood with his family. He stood with his friends. He was also passion compassionate. He spent time also visiting my father in moments of sickness on his own. He suffered his pain gracefully. He saw the dark side of politics as well. And during that moment, they became friends with the late Moses Mudavadi. It is strange that February 1st is when he was taken by the Lord. He was born on February 6th. His other friend, Mose Moi, was also taken in February. Moses Mudavadi was also taken in February. Let's hope February does not take anybody else. But may his soul rest in eternal peace. May his family continue to live in God's name and to have his favor and to have his spirit moving with you now and forevermore. Muzen Yachai, rest in eternal peace. You are a great son of Kenya. Thank you. invite His Excellency Kalonzo Musioka, former Vice President. Uh, I am keen to keep the demands of my pastor. Let us be brief, precise. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Mama Martha, Mama Grace, the Nyachai family, fellow mourners, um, Fred, you were not wrong. I came late, so I quietly sat down. And in fact, I would have been very comfortable not to speak. Because, as I said, when we first paid uh, a call on Mama uh, Grace after the demise of Mze Nyachai, it's very difficult to talk about Mze Nyachai in two minutes. Um, suffice it to say that he was a, a towering personality. Not towering physically, but towering 
even intellectually. I did mention then that um, Mzee Nyachai saw me as an assistant minister uh, in his capacity as chief secretary. I drove myself to State House in a pickup and I was not allowed to drive in. And so here I am, a young fellow from the village Isuko in Sekuru, and, and I see this tall man, President Uhur, President, President um, Zemoy, and his chief secretary. So it was Nyachai who saw me in. And uh, at the end of that ceremony, he actually offered to drive me to town. Now that was the aspect that has been mentioned, tremendous human being. But I think it is Governor Ambora who literally captured who Nyachai was. A very strong personality, a go-getter. At no time for anything that he didn't consider professional. And yet, in later days, when we were, as Mudavadi I said, all the, both of us, uh, three of us, and many of us were in cabinet, as a young minister for foreign affairs, and him, agriculture, and, uh, and Mudavadi in finance, we would take time to listen to Mze Nyachai in cabinet. It was so clear that although he was minister for agriculture, he had that all-round experience, which the chairman of the cabinet, President Moi, would always defer to Mze Nyachai. So his contribution was always hilarious, very deep, very well researched. And then, of course, he joins politics, and I remember him actually covering for me in Nyatarago. He even said that um, he knew I was a family man. I needed that support at that time. And Mama Grace remembers that. Um, and when the difficult issues, he was also Mze, able to listen. And no wonder that um, uh, our elder brother here, David Musila, I saw that from the screen, I was reading the eology. David Musila would take me to Nyachai at night, and Mama Grace, you know, sometimes in the afternoon, and uh, then she would make the famous banana cake, which I still miss. Wonderful family, and wonderful human being. So in Simon Nyachai, in losing Simon Nyachai, we have lost an elder whom we would all have been Deferring to, the, to deferring to at this particular time. I want to, on my own behalf, on behalf of my own family, Pauline would have been here with me, but I, Grace knows that um, we truly value the friendship with the Nyachai family. May the good Lord dress his soul in everlasting peace. Amen. Let me take this opportunity now to invite um, former Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Raila Odinga, to make his uh, brief remarks. Welcome there. Mata, Mama Grace, the Nyachai family, fellow mourners, God is good all the times. We have come to pay tribute to a great Kenyan. And I'm standing here on behalf of the family of Jaramogi Oginga Odinga. Our families have got history. The, the late chief, Paramount Chief Mosa Nyandusi, was a friend of our father. And as Simon would say, he took his elder son, Ayako, 
of the home child is named. To Jaramogi, when Jaramogi was uh, a teacher at Marseno High School, and told him, you told him, let him away. Jaramogi took a yako and paid his school fees. The yako used to live in our house in Marseno. The first time I came and met Mze Nyandusi was a small boy in 1954 when I was told by my father that tomorrow in the morning we are going to Kisi. And I did not sleep. Early in the morning at 3 a.m. we took off. Those old, those called box bodies. The journey would take three hours. Arriving in Kisi town at 6 a.m. And Kisi was very cold. We went to a friend in Kisi hospital. They related me to Jura, who received us, gave us hot tea. After which, he then drove to Mze Nyandusi's home. And we found Mze there who welcomed us. And uh, as we were taken aside, as they, they were talking now with Jaramogi and late Mito Jura. That was my first encounter at that time. And that story in the would tell me several times we met. Uh, the story of how they would come together. So when Jaramogi became the minister for home affairs, when he was in charge of Africanization, the provincial administration was under him. That's when he promoted a child to become the district commissioner at the time. There's another friend we shared with, with, with uh, Simon, that Job Omino. And we would sometimes sit, Grace knows the corner where we used to sit, and they discuss very many issues, history. Job and Simon had attended the same course at Cambridge University, those days when they were being trained to become civil servants. We were great friends. Then another friend we share is um, Mze Madenge there, who was also a fellow permanent secretary, a great friend of Simon's. Madenge there was very much committed to freedom from hunger works. And he drafted Simon into it, and would they worry? We would work together, freedom from hunger. I remember one time, as we were approaching Oyaki Way, I started getting cramps. And <laughs> Zimadenge and, 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 and Simon came to my aid to help me to stretch up so that I could finish the, the, the walk. I was actually very surprised that older people were able to make it and I was actually going to fail. So we were friends. But a lot has been said already about Simon. But there's that human part of him. He was a very compassionate person. But he also lacked uh, uh, um, efficiency. Trained in the colonial culture of efficiency. So he served so many Kenyans to acquire education. When you go to the United States, you'll find villages filled by Kenyans who were actually beneficiaries of Simon's um, uh, generosity. You go to New Jersey, you go to Texas, you go to um, uh, Minnesota, where my friend, the deputy governor, was. Very many Kenyans there. Many sent to India, to China, 
all over the world. So he's made a tremendous contribution to our country. Uh, when he became a minister, I was a, a member of parliament. And we were, of course, uh, opposition, and he was in the government. But we worked very closely together with Simon as a minister for agriculture, later minister for finance at the time. Later on, when he had resigned from the government and was in opposition, we again worked together. When we, we started the Rainbow Coalition together, he came with four people, and we were ourselves, uh, we had come from, broken away from Kanu, and we formed the Rainbow Coalition together because they had negotiated with the late Job Omino. However, when we now teamed up with NAK to form NAC, we had an issue when I said Kibaki Tosha. That did not go down very, very well with Simon. And he would all the time keep on reminding me how I betrayed him. <laughs> but we remained friends uh, generally right through. So we are actually saying goodbye to a great Kenyan patriot, a man who has done a lot in the service of this country. And we want just to say, may the Lord rest Simon's soul in eternal peace. Thank you. Our friends and um, uh, family of Mzanya uh, Chai, there are so many public servants in this audience who we would have loved to listen to. The Honorable Mother Karua, thank you so much for joining us. We are joined here by virtually all elected leaders uh, from Kisi and Nyamira, led by our senator from Kisi, Mze, Professor Sam Ongeri. Uh, who is here. Uh, I know that by the grace of God, we are going to get an opportunity when we go home to speak one to another, and we have walked together this journey. Uh, I also would like to recognize the presence of our Chief Justice Emeritus, our elder brother, Justice David uh, Maraga, who is there, if he could stand up and wave. Thank you. And Mwishimua, uh, Mayor Cage, and the leaders of Nairobi uh, who are here, who have worked with Muse for a very long time. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to say this before I invite um, my colleague uh, Mutai Kawe. And of course, before I invite the CSK, we have so many colleagues from the executive branch of government who are here, principal secretaries, the deputy head of public service, Mr. Wanyama Musiambu, who was deputized by the president to sit through the planning for this uh, funeral service, uh, a number of permanent secretaries in the audience, and my cabinet colleagues who are here, uh, CS Minor, CS Omamo, CS Kawe, and all of you who are present. I'd like to say this in two minutes or so. Like a child who looks up to his uh, towering father, I actually never thought in my life or never factored in my life that such a day would come. Because for about 20 years, I've had the probably most unique privilege of working close and working with Mzee Simeon Yachai. In everything except biology, I am Mzee Nyachai's son. Because he raised me, I spent so much time with him, I traveled with him. And um, probably two thirds of the impact he had in my life cannot actually be verbalized. 
And it's difficult to describe Mzee Nyachai in very few words. And I'm not alone. Actually, if we had time, let me be very sincere here. There are hundreds of people, uh, those that were described by Prime Minister Raila Odinga here, hundreds of young people from all walks of life in this country, from Kisi, from all communities of this country, who would probably be nothing today had it not been for the personal intervention of Mse Simeon Nyachai in their lives. I frankly do not think there is anyone I know who has educated the number of people that Mse Nyachai educated. And I'm not shy to say this here in public. When you look at the education and the professional profile of the Kisi community, you have to address the Nyachai factor. The Nyachai factor is the resources that Mse Nyachai mobilized and pumped into the education and professional development of our people. Uh, incredibly generous and always available to support uh, anyone who needed support. And I had this unique opportunity of having a front row seat in his life and seeing him in action. As I often say in public life, I am still using Mze Nyachai's notes, even as I serve as cabinet minister. And I will cling on to those notes for a long time. In the last eight years that I've been in cabinet, uh, there has never been a time until about a year ago when Muse became sick and we couldn't speak very regularly, there wasn't a time, a stretch of time, that I did not either consult him or he called me or he, he actually never called, he summoned us. Uh, to make demands on us on a number of things. And for my cabinet colleagues who are here, I took all the beating for your mistakes. And any time you spoke out of turn, I am the one who was called and told how badly we are behaving, or how it was felt that we are not supporting the president enough. Because Mze may have retired as a PC and as head of public service, but the head of public service in him did not leave. And the chief secretary in him never parted. Always in control and always in charge of things. And always very clear in his mind on what needs to be done. As I said, it will take a long time to comprehensively verbalize what Mzee Nyachai meant to very many people, including myself. As I conclude, I just want to ask, first of all, thank my mothers who are here and my brothers and sisters from the Nyachai family. I thank you on behalf of the hundreds of young people who passed through Mze Nyachai's hands. Thank you for sharing your father with us and thank you for graciously accommodating us in your framework of things. I have never come across a complaint or displeasure or unhappiness in this family, even when Muse sometimes spent hours with us, counseling these people, or doing this. May the Lord bless you and continue to bless you for that. And lastly, I ask this. For all of us who are here, and the people that Muse Nyachai had a strong impact in, the difficult part of our lives begins now which is to leave his legacy. And I pray that those of us who have been and will be as the Lord leads be given an opportunity to either make a contribution in public service or work with others, may we never let him down. I was actually thinking the other day on Monday night that there is nothing Muse did not do he trained us on everything. He taught us everything. It's now upon us to leave that legacy and walk in his footsteps. And for our people who are here, Wauziba Minto, Mwakoyo, Vinta to Tebeti, about Kobamo, Nakobeke, Sagueto Amo, now is the time to think about those things. Komenyana Maskani, Wakabadwe, Tobariga, Baraibara, Mwakongel, Nabakabande, Mwakanya Chao, Kodrega, Sia, Kodri. 
no mwaka nya chai throughout put all of us together kwanto ngora mboli bale sometimes ya mangana ya ngora kwane for capital even some of the kisi for capital ya kye landed kure so mwaka akole to bokaya yuga ko sita kole to bochoni data island kure so mwaka nya chai eh uno boji ino mwaka nya chai so meti binde byonse tati tobe abantu to kuerenda naenda abantu to kuerenda so gito na ndo kuerenda so gito gito monato seseni and once again we can't thank this family enough for what you have collectively done to all of us by being generous gracious kind accommodating and always present and supportive of all of us even though actually uh, you could have you didn't have to do it and by doing that you supported your father to raise all of us and to ensure that we are making a contribution to our society with those remarks I would like to invite my brother and my colleague, our Cabinet Secretary for Health, the Honorable Mutahi Kawe, who will make some remarks and read a message of condolences from His Excellency, our President. Senator. very much um, Mama Lee, Mama Charles, the entire Nyachai family, fellow mourners. My job this, this afternoon, thank you very much uh, C.S. Matiangi, my job this afternoon is a simple one <clears throat> because I am supposed to give the message of condolence from uh, His Excellency the President. But before I do so, allow me to just say one or two things because I too, like the Honorable Musalia Mudavadi and uh, the Honorable Kalonzo, also served with Muse Nyashai in the cabinet. But uh, my service with Muse Nyashai was perhaps slightly different. Because I had this position where I knew Nyachai's children as my friends, because I knew Charles very well, Mary and the rest of them. And Ken Nyachai was my mono in high school. <laughs> and by the way, he was also the 100 meters and 200 meters champion in Kagumo High School. No matter they say, Ugali comes from the flower. So he was, he was our, our champion, our 100 meters champion. Then when I joined the cabinet, I then was faced by these wazes, led by Mze Nyachai, who was born in exactly the same year as my father. So yes, we were cabinet secretaries, all of us, but as uh, Musari rightly said, you know, in, animal, in the animal farm, all animals are equal. But some animals were more equal than others. So in that cabinet, there used to be some animals that were a bit more equal than those of us who are much younger uh, than them. But for me, what I remember most is that Mze Nyachai would ha had this characteristic. And when he passed away, I really thought about it. What was it? And it just dawned on me that that characteristic was one where he believed in lifting each other up, lifting people up, lifting colleagues up. In other words, there are two ways of creating equity. One of them is bringing somebody down. What they call in, in, uh, in our slangs, pull him down, PhD. And a lot of Kenyans believe that the way to equate us is to bring others down so that we are all equal. 
But there are those Kenyans who know that the best way of, of uh, creating equity is to bring those who are down up. And that's what I noticed most in Muzenya Chai. He believed no matter how young we were, we should be pulled up, taught what is necessary so that we can serve the same way that they did. A man who symbolized discipline, patience also, but more important than anything else, he symbolized patriotism. And that is something that we can copy even as he passes away. As is for his family, I also want to say that at this time, the nation is praying with you because he stood with us in our hours of need. And we stand with you. Mama Lee, we stand with you. Mama Charles, we stand with you. We pray with you. And we pray that the Lord God will rest Muse somewhere comfortable in eternal peace. It is now my privilege and pleasure to read the message of His Excellency the President. It was with immense grief and a deep sense of personal sadness that I learned of the death of Honorable Mze Simeon Nyachai. <clears throat> At this moment of great loss and sorrow, my family and I convey our deepest condolences and words of encouragement to the family, relatives, and friends of the late Mze Nyachai. As we join you in mourning the passing of Mze Nyachai, we also join you in celebrating his accomplishments. Honorable Mze Nyachai was a great son of Kenya whose immeasurable contributions to the nation spanned many decades and inspired millions of Kenyans. In the passing of the Honorable Nyachai, we are all deprived of his leadership great passion, determination, and energy towards serving our country. Even in death, Mze Nyashai undoubtedly stands tall amongst dedicated patriots of this country. His service to Kenya was characterized by utmost integrity, rare zeal, unbridled commitment to duty, and passionate candor that earned him accolades in three successive administrations. Mzenyeshai was a remarkable leader who motivated all around him to be honorable, decisive, and accountable to the people they serve. Mze served the people of Kenya with diligence and devotion in different capacities, including that of cabinet minister, chief secretary, legislator of consequence, and prominent businessman. Kenya is undoubtedly better for having Mze Nyachai. And his legacy is fundamentally intertwined with the peace, prosperity, and democracy that all Kenyans enjoy today. At a personal level, I vividly recall my many interactions with the late Mze Nyachai over the years as an elder, mentor, counselor, and friend. Mze Nyachai always had a word of wisdom, advice, and encouragement for me. His impact on my life shall never be lost, just as his vision for this country shall never be forgotten. Therefore, as we mourn the loss of this great son of Kenya, we pay tribute to his legacy, which I trust will be carried on for generations to come. Titans of history like the late Muse Nyachai only die a physical death. For in their legacy, in the millions of lives that they have made better, they enjoy immortality of the soul. Muse Nyachai will live on forever in our hearts, minds, and memories. And in the history of a nation that is eternally grateful for his exemplary service. As Christians, we take solace from the Word of God in Psalms 73, chapter 26, which says, 
my flesh and my heart may fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. End of quote. May the Almighty God rest the soul of Muse Simeon Yachai in eternal peace. Uhuru Kenyatta, CGH, President of the Republic of Kenya, Asanteni. Waziri Kagwe na tunamshukuru rais ujumbe umefika and we are honored to have all of you Waziri Matiangi thank you for setting the pace and it would have been wonderful to have many of you speak but because we must also conduct this program in a timely fashion we seek that now we go back to the church and uh, to kick us off is Kemunto Kingi, Daktari, uh, and her group to come and do a song. And uh, subsequently, we shall have a reading from Psalms 121 by the son of the late Mzenya Chai, that's Noah Nyachai, and uh, him by the mother's voice as we now bring in Pastor to do the sermon. It's wonderful to have all of you here and I'm also honored to have learned a lot from Grandpa Zenya Chai. The business acumen that some of us have, those have been our mentors with Mze, also not forgetting people like Mze Kangwana Jared. And of course now into the church which we've been brought in through the family of Pastor Mambia and the Mochaches. And of course our wonderful church in Nairobi Central here. SDA. Those are the people who've made me and I must recognize them. So as they get prepared, we just wish to say thank you and welcome. Dr. Kingi, this is my Sokoro. He was, all these are the grandchildren. And this song we are singing as a family. So I'd like also my mom and your sisters, brothers to all help. It's from Psalms 23. And um, yeah.
the memorial service of the later Simeon Nyachai coming to you live from the Maxwell uh, Central uh, Church right here in Nairobi. And it is uh, just at uh, this particular function that uh, Ray, uh, ODM leader Raila Odinga and other political leaders uh, took time to remember uh, the later Simeon Nyachai and the times that uh, they spent with him uh, during his time as a leader in the, in the political space and also as a civil servant. Quite a number of cabinet secretaries and a few governors who took to the podium, including Governor Martin Wambora, shared uh, light moments they spent with the late Nyachai in the cabinet. Actually, CS, Interior CS Fred Matiangi uh, saying that even today as he serves in cabinet, uh, before the late Nyachai passed on, he used to take notes and take a lot of advice uh, uh, and informed a lot of decisions that he made during his time in cabinet. He's celebrated as a man who elevated upcoming leaders into government. And of course, those who felt that they were out of place and they, they had a lot of challenges uh, fitting in, uh, serving in government, he played a pivotal role in mentoring them and encouraging them. President Uhuru Kenyatta threw a speech that was read by the health CS uh, Mutahi Kagwe. Simeon Nyachai as a patriot and as a somebody who has actually left a legacy that is intertwined with the, the peace and the prosperity that this na nation celebrates. He celebrates uh, Nyachai as a great son of Kenya uh, who is among the veterans in history and actually says that his physical death is just, uh, it's just like an opener to uh, the things that he is living uh, that have shaped this particular country. He has described him as somebody who had and shared a lot of wisdom and encouragement and had great impact in his personal life. The late Simeon Nyachai will be laid to rest on the 15th of February uh, this particular year, uh, but uh, many of the mourners who are here, uh, including leaders and even the family, uh, continue to celebrate him as a light and a great patriarch that really uh, remained very uh, pivotal in just cementing the unity of the entire family and the entire uh, Gusi region. Political leaders from the Kisi region came here, uh, including members of parliament who actually in their time when they were sharing about this uh, great leader who was passed on, say that uh, even until the later days of his death, he was actually very instrumental in bringing them together and helping them to sort of chat a way of speaking in one voice and uh, you know today actually marks a great day as the journey to his final send-off begins from this memorial service has he will be laid to rest on the 15th of February a lot has been said about this great man and of course we'll continue updating you and giving you more details about this particular the plans that are there for his burial and of course more about what was said in this particular memorial service in our subsequent news bulletins but for now we just want to hand you over back to studio to Irene Mchuma Odim. My name is Afina Cheng Oma and on behalf of the entire crew that has been here making this a success we appreciate your time. For now it's back to you Irene. We'll neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you the Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by the day, nor by, uh, noon, uh, the moon by the night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He'll watch, uh, watch over you. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Thank you. 